Welcome back, guys. Uh, I am back here with uh, Aaron today. Uh, Andrew is hello, uh, not hello. here with us. But, uh, yeah, we're going to jump right into the draft between uh, Tufts and Sheridan. Tufts has uh, gotten red side after they lost the coin flip. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really synergize well being Tufts blue. But, you know, maybe we'll see it work out on the actual rift. Sometimes the colors don't match up, but that's all right. <laughs> Regardless, though, we do have an exciting matchup for Week 9 of CSL. Tufts, they need to win three games, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, to make it yeah. uh, further in this tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually have to win out uh, these last three games to uh, make it to playoffs. Uh, last time, they were uh, playing against Marist, and they were uh, able to scrape out a win in a very close best of three. Uh they ended up having a very intelligent champ select draft in the last game, combined with a strong Game 3 performance, and uh, that has kept their playoff dreams alive. They've now had a couple of days since the last game to prepare for today, so we'll see if they can continue on this path of winning out and uh, make it to playoffs. Yeah, just glancing at the players, it looks like there is a slight uh, rank gap between the two teams. Tufts slightly stronger uh, across the board, it looks like. Uh, and with yeah. that, I think they can kind of come in with high hopes into this matchup and look for a swift 2-0. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, there are some very strong players on Sheridan. Uh, the top laner is currently in promos two Masters already, very early in the season. On the so, come up. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely will be a very interesting matchup in that top lane. We'll see if Argentine Import can uh, come out ahead. I mean, uh, glancing at the OB.GG, he's just been grinding Darius, though. So, <laughs> but, I mean, I guess whatever works to make it to the top. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think the players are uh, getting ready to start the draft. Um, yeah. Uh, Waiting on the pro draft. Allegedly, at first we thought it was going to be done by Carrier Pigeon, but unfortunately that did not happen, despite... How funny that could have been. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. 
glancing at the lane that chat, but, yeah. as you said the, their top laner is quite strong which i'm not too familiar with tough's top laner how do you think that matchup's going to work out yeah it's actually interesting because uh uh, as of last week, the top and mid laner for Tufts decided to switch roles. Um, I've heard this is because they uh, really? Wait, to, so like, it was Morn in the top lane? No, it's uh, it used to be Easy Life in the top lane oh, wait, no, with Argentine import in the mid lane. Yeah, but uh, right. yeah, they have currently switched roles, and uh, it's actually seemed um, relatively strong. Oh. Uh, there definitely have been a couple games where uh, the enemy team has decided to roam mid a lot, and uh, Easy Life has definitely taken the brunt of that. But yeah, uh, the synergy is working out pretty well, and um, obviously the switch is kind of new. So very, inter- very interested to see um, how, how that keeps going. Uh, yeah, we've definitely seen a lot of Scion from the side of Argentine import, and he's part of that very well. So we'll Scion's see if he brings it out again today. I, lo- I just love the concept of infinite scaling. And yeah, if the game went on forever, he would have infinite health, <laughs> which is always yeah. funny to me. Mm-hmm. It uh. It's very interesting, very fun to watch. Not very fun if you're enemy no, ADC, but terrible. you know, we're spectators, so. Which is are Scions still building Sunfire Aegis or are they building some new wacky are they also building Gale Force at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they go as crazy as to go for Gale Force, yeah. but uh there That's have been some interesting builds. <laughs> uh I think um Argentine Import himself has tried uh different things like Sunfire some games, uh even Gore Drinker other games. Uh so okay, yeah, interesting I think to see. Yeah, and uh, wonder, it's like the draft is starting now with an Olaf fan starting out with Sheridan. Yeah, targeting the board on that one. I wish people still played Lethality Sun with Glacial Augment. I saw Lethality Aatrox, that was crazy. Uh, maybe they will come out this game. Only time will tell. <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, that uh, the players have said in the chat that that blank ban from Sheridan was actually Aatrox, so. We won't, we won't be seeing that one today, sadly. And a Katarina ban from Tufts as well. Very respectful ban. Uh, the bid later for Sheridan is actually has a ton of Katarina games this season. I think like something like 50. So definitely a very strong champion from their side and an intelligent ban from Tufts. Yeah, looking at Sheridan's fans, they, they just really have it out for more. <laughs> Yeah. His yeah. Elise is something crazy. I've watched him when he's been playing on the Strike of Vipers. And he is just a powerhouse. Uh, especially when he's on that Elise. So, a smart choice by Shaker. Yeah, it's a more smart choices in the bands. Tufts is actually elected to take away Darius and Garen, two of the top laners that uh, the top laner I was talking about earlier has played a ton of games on. So, good yeah. man. And there's Aphelios first pick from Sheridan. Yeah, Aphelios, and then Kai'Sa Leon, that's going to be a kill lane for the side of Tufts. Uh, Kai'Sa, yeah. I swear, has been played every single match I've seen <laughs> recently. Uh, yeah, so she's basically pick really picker her band now. And uh, I like the pick from Sheridan, picking the Aphelios, because uh, Jen has shown that he's very proficient on that champion. But uh, I personally still like the Kai'Sa a little bit better. Aphelios does have the advantage as he likes people to dive on him a little bit, and Kai'Sa yeah. does, like alt on top of Aphelios, but if Aphelios doesn't have the right guns, Kai'Sa can definitely assassinate him late game. Yeah, I think that'll be something to watch for. I'll be curious to see if Kai'Sa will decide to pick up uh, an, early, an early tier, maybe. I've seen that a couple times, but for the most part, they just rush Crack and Slayer. Yeah. I'm always a fan. I used to run AP Kaisa in the middle lane <laughs> and just spamming W. So yeah. terrible. Yeah, I've done that actually a lot in ARAM because uh, getting that W poke really, really is pretty impressive. So sad. Uh, yeah, and we see the Yone picked up as well from Sheridan, and that's answered with a Renekton from Tufts. Yone is a little interesting. He can be flexed both mid and top. Uh, I'm not quite sure which one is better, but. Uh, the Argentine import has decided to take the Renekton, unless of course that is in place in the mid lane, which is unlikely, but it could happen. Yeah. I'll be curious to see what the Sheridan top lane is with Darius and Garn banned out, as you mentioned. It looked like maybe Mordekaiser could be a valid option for him, based off his match history, and the play style is pretty similar to those two champions, so let's see if yeah. Tuff decides to take that out of the pool for him, or leave it open and they just I'm actually uh, very surprised with this Lilia ban. Uh, 
Yeah, Morn is uh, one of these players, like you said, who gets targeted a lot in the picker man phase, and uh, taking away yet another jungler that he has had some good performances on uh, might indicate that they're, uh, I don't know, have another pick in mind and uh, want to take that away. But uh, there's one more ban on the side of Sheridan. There's the Mordekaiser ban, like you said, uh, similar play style and very smart from Tufts yeah. taking that away. <laughs> yeah, good choice by Tufts right there. I mean, Okay, I was about to mention Morn Tekram as well. He's a big fan of the four-legged horses uh, on the rift. His Lilia and Hecarim are quite strong. And so with those out of the picture, uh, I'll be curious to see what he decides to go for. So cool yeah. uh, kind of pick out. Yeah, but he does have that uh, pick right now if he wants to lock up another jungle as there have already been five, four junglers taken away, but the Vladimir instead is being covered. It's another very interesting pick because uh, last time we last game we saw RGT and Import take that up in the top lane, but Renekton is already taken, so maybe they're indicating that they can uh, flex those uh, mid and top laners and uh, you know uh, switch up the matchups. Yeah, the old switcheroo, the old cinnamon swirl with the middle and top lane, which I feel like Renekton would just body on though early on, yeah. so I feel like they're gonna try and lock that. Yeah, especially with the uh, um, Renekton. Yeah, especially with that Renekton W, you know, uh, taking away that yeah. shield from Yone, uh, making him a little squishier, uh, you know, dealing with that, like, uh, dealing presence that he has, and the, like, amount of burst damage he can do if uh, Yone tries to dash on top of him. The Udyr is picked up for the side of Sheridan, and, uh, Warren is actually going to get the counter pick here into the Udyr. Uh, I don't think I've seen Udyr in the CSL as of yet, but <laughs> it's on a only on Twitch. popular pick. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely been a popular pick. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he's pretty versatile. You can go AD or AP, so kind of leaves uh, that on the table, depending on how they want to play out the game. Looks like Morn on the Skarner. Which is not something I've seen. Yeah, and I think part of the reason we haven't seen it yet is because uh, there are like seven different Skarner mains in this league. Uh, last, I think the last two games, the matches they played, there was a Skarner main top laner or jungler, or I think they were jungler both times. So they haven't oh. <laughs> uh, let that one come up. But uh, yeah, uh, very interesting to see this pick. It's less of a carry pick from uh, the side of Morn. So uh, maybe he's. Uh, you know, trying to aim for that Vladimir or Kaisa to take over the game a little bit, but definitely has a lot of pick potential with that suppress that uh, every ADC main uh, loads. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how he, uh, how he, uh, you know, plays it out. Yeah, I guess he's, yeah, as you said, going for a more supportive role. I'm so used to Morn playing one of those carries, but I don't know, Skarner. What's the build on that? I, I feel like. Uh, Turbo Chem Tank would be kind of fun. Just yeah, uh, Turbo Chem Tank has uh, definitely been a very strong one on Skarner. Just the ability to engage from really far away, you know, get that movement speed, get that quick ulti onto the carry and pull it back. Um, Blind. Yeah, especially with Turbo. It's a much stronger item than before. Yeah, yeah it could be a quick early pickup. More Morn. And where do you think First Blood's gonna come from? I feel like whatever, whichever lane Renekton and Yona are in. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely gonna be a very interesting uh, lane to watch. Um, definitely interested to see uh, who ends up taking the Vladimir on the side of uh, Tufts. Arshin Import obviously has a very strong Vladimir. Pulled it out in that game three. Uh, you know, very, very strong. Uh, he's very strong on that champion. Played him in the mid lane when he was back in mid lane last. Uh, I guess it was in 2020, but uh, Easy Life can definitely play it out. He plays a lot of uh, mages and stuff in the mid lane, so again, very interested to see uh, who ends up taking it. Yeah, and then Vladimir, obviously pretty safe to play in lane, so if he does get jumped on, he can just pool and slither back to the tower, so not a whole lot to worry about uh, if he just yeah. does get jumped by an early gank. And then... I feel like the bottom lane for Tufts is just gonna be crazy since Ophelios really can't do much early on. So it's really gonna be up to this Nautilus to protect him. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, the burst damage that comes from Halo Blades Kaisa with that W means that uh, the Philios definitely has to play a, a little safe. Uh, there is a chance that when he gets that like crescendo with any other gun combo, he can get a ton of burst damage down because Philios does have the 200 years on his side. But uh... exactly 200 years, exactly. <laughs> And I'm actually excited to see how this Renekton plays out. Uh, Easy Life, like yeah. we talked about before, used to be a top lane main, or used to play a lot of top lane in the CSL, so there's a chance he has a decent amount of experience on this Renekton pick. And uh, mm. yeah, it looks like that's what they're end up gonna they're gonna end up doing. Argentine Import on the Vladimir and Easy Life on the Renekton. So two lanes definitely watch out of. Yeah, I feel like with Tufts being geared kind of towards the early game in both the bottom and middle lane. They really got to be careful to not mess anything up. They could easily look for dives early on, but if those go wrong and the Aphelios and Yon start to get fed, things could quickly go wrong for Duffs. Yeah. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is uh, the damage composition from the side of uh, Sheridan. Uh, Yone does have a little bit of magic damage in his kit. I think his ulti and his W yeah. do half magic, and there's like I think there's some also on hit damage built into his kit that's magic, but uh, other than that, there's not too much magic damage on the side of Sheridan. But like you mentioned before, there's the a chance Deere. for the Udyr to go a little more AP heavy. Uh, I've the seen John some... Deere classic. <laughs> yeah, recently I I've guess seen some. Um, <laughs> I've seen some go as much as like tank into Lich Bane into just like full AP. So we'll yeah. see what they end up uh, going for. Yeah, I don't know. You could go. Night, Har Night Harvester Lich Bane would be kind of funny and just trying to pop Kaisa, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, a little squishy, <laughs> but I definitely would do a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, you got the Alawi to kind of as a bruiser to make up for it along with Nautilus. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think the Udyr's build will be something to also watch this game, <laughs> considering yeah. the lack of AP. Yeah. Well, anyways, it's definitely bound to be a very exciting game. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come We'll have game one of Sheridan versus Tufts. Uh, don't go anywhere, and we'll see you after the break. Stay tuned.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's another beautiful day on Summoner's Rift. Uh, welcome. I'm Aaron, with me is Adi, and today we got some amazing League of Legends. Yeah, um, one thing I want to talk about from the beginning is the Aphelio Summoner spells from Side of Sheridan. Uh, Jan Su is someone who's played a ton of Aphelios recently and uh, has actually opted to go for a phase rush uh, every time, but uh, the Conqueror is... Uh, picked up instead, which I think is a more traditional pick, but we'll see if that lack of mobility is something uh, Tufts is going to be able to take advantage of. Yeah, I think they will be, just because they have a lot of options with Morn, uh, trying to run it in there with that ultimate for the Skarner, trying to get a pick, maybe getting that chem ta uh, excuse me, turbo chem tank uh, easy in and out, so the lack of mobility could end up hurting them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this, there is a lot of dive on the side of uh, Tufts uh, with the phase rush both on the Vladimir and the Skarner, so a lot of mobility for them. Uh, we'll see if, uh, again, that lack of phase rush ends up punishing them. Yeah, I don't know. And then I'm so excited to see what Udyr's first item is. I he yeah. has to be AP, right? Otherwise, uh, it just, it's too easy to itemize against them. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, there's a chance to be like go with a tankier Sunfire build. You can like max your R and get some magic damage out that way. But uh, we'll see. Uh, both sides ended up uh, choosing to leash top, so um, the are gonna start on their blue and red respectively. Yeah, no early action just yet. I'm still drawn early on. There's not much they can do. Yeah. Uh oh, uh -oh and, Nautilus. Uh, Getting a little aggressive, a little too aggressive. There comes the first blood right away, straight to the Kai'Sa. <laughs> yeah, and uh, like you were saying, the aggressiveness of both bot lanes. Uh, Nautilus maybe going in a little too ham early, and uh, I guess uh, he gets punished for it. Yeah, that... So bold, I feel like, because Aphelios doesn't have any abilities until he's level 2. Like, there's not much he can do, and then that level 1 Q, uh, I guess trying to fight fire with fire there. That was a bold choice, and didn't really pan out. 
so far, Felio is still staying even on CS, so despite uh, losing a laner for a little bit, still doing all right. Yeah, um, other than that, uh, lanes seem uh, relatively even. A uh, bit of a farm lead for the Yone, but uh, you know, with a big wave built up for the Renekton, it shouldn't be uh, there for too much longer. Yeah, this Yone has to be careful. The caster minion damage sneaks up on you. Uh, <laughs> Winions, as I like to call them, or as everyone likes to call them. Since early on, if you're in like a wave of five of them, they just pummel you. It's insane. Yeah. And, uh. Uh oh, not again in the bottom lane. It looks like Kaisa will be AO key. Uh, but the Leona up front beating him off. More and running in, looking to get a stun off on the Nalus. Gets it off, but uh oh. The Ophel is putting so much damage into this Leona flashes forward, unable to get the kill. Morn has to walk it back to the tower. And with that, no kills coming through. But in the middle lane, Easy Life just waiting for the tether to come back. And the second kill will go to Tufts. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really get to see what too much of what will happen in the mid lane because of that fight in the bot lane. But uh, I guess the Renekton, uh, you know, having that advantage in those skirmishes against the Yone, uh, having the, like, heavy burst damage and the, like, Shield Shred on top of the ability to, you know, uh, punish Yone for uh, having uh, that tether on. Yeah, you gotta be careful when you're in lane using that. Can't really use that to escape, obviously, as we just saw. Um, would like to quick apologize for a couple technical difficulties that we had. Uh, it's, it's rough out here sometimes, but that's what happens when you're on the rift. <laughs> yeah. Um, after all that, uh, it seems like everything is calming down a tiny bit. Uh, farm is still, like, relatively even across the board. Uh, slight goal lead in favor of the Jumbas as they've gotten those, uh, two early kills. Um, yeah, this, uh, Vladimir Lyre lane isn't really, you know, leading to much action. Uh, makes kind yeah. of sense. Uh, Vladimir is relatively safe and can, you know, uh, stop himself from getting bullied out a lot of these matchups. Yeah, the Vladimir to allow is pretty strong. And now in the middle lane, easy life once again. Hits level sticks against the Yone. Not much he can do. Tries to go back in to knock him up, but it may have been way too aggressive. Easy life just can walk it in underneath the tower. Does have flash available. Not going to use it just yet. And Udyr coming in to just wave, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Udyr is level 4 and uh, Rectin is level 6. Uh, Dominus not yet burned from the side of easy life, but... Uh, yeah, he's uh, doing a lot of work in this matchup. Yeah, and it looks like, as you said, Udyr is building more of that tank build. Probably probably going to be maxing R as well uh, to get that little touch of magic damage. Yeah, which... and uh, one thing to point out is, like, with this uh, pick from Renekton, Easy Life can actually play relatively aggressive because the ball lane is uh, putting a decent amount of pressure on and, you know, Nautilus hasn't been able to try to go around and make a gank and, uh, I guess while there's still an Udyr, uh, the fact that he's been, like, bullying his Yone out so much, there's a chance that with his level 6 coming already, he can probably won't be too. Yeah, he's gotta be careful. Um, since, once again, the Renekton early on just way too powerful, not much Yone can do. Uh, and then, well, yeah, as you said, the pressure on the bottom lane kind of opens up the map. I'll be curious to see when Tufts decide to go for an early dragon, if they do at all. Maybe they'll just try and keep applying pressure uh, and looking to pick up some plates. Yeah, Amorn is sitting here in this mid lane. He's been sitting there for quite a while, uh, yeah. maybe trying to, you know, see if Yone missed out as well. With Renekton uh -oh. pushing him down, Renekton pushing him in so much. Uh, yeah, some, a fight breaking out in the bottom lane. They gotta be careful. He'll Careful here, excuse me, Leona getting caught out of solid gank from the Udyr. Finally coming in clutch, picking up the first kill for the side of Sheridan. Yeah, and great job from Sheridan, getting that flash from Kaisa, locking down that Leona, and uh, yeah, punishing Tufts for like, playing so aggressive and uh, pushing them in so much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so much the, for that pressure. <laughs> yeah. Did not work out in their favor in the end. And it looks like Sheridan will be the team to pick up the early dragon. Uh, Caster's Curse, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, now and, up on uh, the top side. Dragon taker, so oh my god, more on the top side. Immediately just grabbed him. There's nothing the Alawi can do. And quick kill 
for Tusk once again down the middle lane. Udyr flashing forward. The Nala's coming in as well. There's the roam we were looking for. Strong Cat steals the kill though from his teammate. A little unfortunate now in the bottom lane. The Aphelios just getting chunked out. The supports both getting kills. <laughs> Looks yeah. like it's going to be the carry Leona versus the carry Nautilus. <laughs> yeah, great job from Sheridan, you know, uh, trying to come in and help out in this mid lane, seeing the jungler uh, game that kill top lane, but uh, the ADC is standing up a little too far, you know, it's like those memes where the support goes to ward and the ADC dies. Uh, no reason for the ADC to be in that bush right there, and good job from uh, Constantine Baldor and Jen Su sniffing it out and uh, getting a return kill down on the bot lane. Yeah, super free. <laughs> a little bit of a misplay, as you said, from the Aphelios. And despite the Aphelios being at a disadvantage in the lane, it's still very even on CS uh, with a slight lead, actually. And with Kai'Sa back, he can look to extend that as well, which is a little surprising considering the way the draft went. Um, but that could just be from uh, the Kai'Sa and Leona being a little too aggressive, giving up that kill to the Udyr, uh, giving them a little bit more room to breathe on the side of Sheridan. Yeah, and there's about a 1k gold lead from the side of Tufts, uh, though they're down a dragon, but, uh, you know, some of that, a lot of that gold is gonna be on that, uh, Kai'Sa and that, uh, Vladimir, who have, you know, gotten a little bit of love from their junglers, or, uh, gotten that return kill in the bot lane, so, uh, gold is definitely where it needs to be for Tufts, so we'll see if they can, uh, have these two carries take over the game. Yeah, hopefully they will be able to. God, that Renekton damage is just insane. <laughs> yeah, Yon with can't the even walk up the He's farm. very strong. Yeah, Yon only has two D-Blades right now and some boots. Oh, up on the top side, Vladimir looking to try and get some damage off on the Alawi. Could look to maybe all in. The ultimate will be up in a little bit. Argentine import. With a decent CS lead, not much the allow you can do to bully. Now back to the bottom lane, though, as a fight breaks out. The Aphelia is way up in front of this Kai'Sa. Way too bold as Morn's coming in. Here comes the Udyr as well, trying to help out his teammate. Won't be able to, though, as is the first to fall. The Udyr picks up Morn as well. This is a disaster for Tufts. Constantine Valdor trying to get a kill in return. Won't be able to. And this Aphelia has just jumped way into the lead on gold. Yeah, and that's just the power of the Crescendo. You know, like we said, uh likes to uh, get Dove on with that gun because he gets the uh, extra damage from uh, having the gun, having the blades bounce back and the uh, extra damage from having those stacks. So uh, nice job from Archie Import to get a kill on the top lane, but uh, yeah. this is going to be a monster now. <laughs> Which, this is what we were kind of talking about early on in draft, where Tufts kind of loses the grip they have on the early game just with the strength on their draft. Uh, it could be very difficult to kind of climb back up into the driver's seat of this game, which right now it being even and a lot of the gold being on the Aphelios for Sheridan puts them in the danger zone. Yeah, and uh, I really like that this uh, Udyr has been coming bot so much, you know, knowing that this is like a place where Tufts is gonna try to be a little aggressive. Um, the, uh, yeah, so while the top lane has gotten some love as well from the side of Tufts and Vladimir is definitely gonna be a monster, this Aphelios is, uh, not going to be, uh, you know, something to laugh at. It's going to be very strong as we get into this mid to, mid to late game. Yeah, I think he will have some problems, though, if Renekton can keep getting large in the middle lane, farming off this Yone. Uh, and then, as you said, Vladimir is also very strong, the side of Tufts. They can both focus Aphelios and burst him down. And for now, Aphelios is really uh, Sheridan's only win condition, unless they can pick up a couple more dragons and look for a soul. Uh, Felius is really the key to their win. Yeah, and uh, we saw what Arch Tampor can do on that fed Vladimir last game, where there was already t uh, Skarner and Malzahar suppressed, so maybe uh, without the phase rush on the Felios, without as much uh, hard CC to lock him down, uh, he'll be able to run a little more rampant in this game. Yeah, which the Conquer obviously will help in those extended fights, but once again, if he just gets bursted down, it's not going to do anything where... Uh, Perhaps the phase rush would have been better, since Aphelios is obviously not very mobile. Just like you said earlier in the game, that will just maybe come back to bite him. Yeah. Oh my Flash god. Flash the, the top lane, yeah. Argentine import. Nowhere for him to go. <laughs> Udyr just running in and smiting him, Alawi picking up the kill with a tentacle. That's tough. <laughs> yeah. That was a good job from the jungler, you know. Uh, 
trying to uh, get that low Vladimir uh, to be forced into those tentacles. Uh, didn't have to do much to secure that kill. Really good double, um, I guess, soul pull. I don't know the name of the ability from Malawi to chunk out the Vladimir and set up for a really nice uh, dive, I guess. Yeah. What is it, is it like test of spirit, test of strength? Uh, I think we can figure it out if you click on the carrot. Oh, sec. facts. Well, test no, of spirit. I like that, yeah. Man. I like surprises. <laughs> test of spirit. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> But yeah, solid pickup for the side of Shannon. They look they're looking for another one in the middle lane. Yon connects the ultimate onto this reactor reactor fighting back though, and easy life gets the kill on the leader. Now in the bottom lane, Constantine Valdor caught out the teleport coming in clutch right there. Felius picking up his fourth kill. And Morin just has to run away. Yeah, but the Udyr falling in the mid lane to that gank, uh, like I said, strong Renekton can uh, so sneaky coming in, not anything that Yon can do. Did not have the flash available, so that was just a free pickup. And now it's just 7-7, still an even game so far. Uh, but Sheridan is slightly ahead on the board. Yeah, that Rift Herald play top lane, and the tower they're about to get here is just going to give them a pretty decent goal lead. However, this Rectin is a monster, getting that 1v2 in the mid lane, you know? I was saying before, once Rectin gets a Dominus, he has the potential to outplay and get the uh, 1v2 kill if he gets ganked, and, uh, you know, good shot from him uh, outplaying that using, you know, his lead to secure another kill and, uh, you know, stem a little bit of the bleeding for the side of Tusk. Yeah, I mean, he's got so much healing from Gore Drinker, from Call of the Meek, that I'm kind of surprised that nobody's opted into an early Grievous Wounds on the side of Sheridan, especially considering there's also Vladimir on the team. Yeah, Vladimir definitely is going to have a little bit rougher time. Uh, has about a 30 CS lead, but uh, without that tower to protect himself, uh, he's going to have to be a little careful. But it seems like Alawi is deciding to go into the bot lane, try to match his protected instead, and the uh, Yone is instead on the top. Yeah, the old switcheroo finally coming through. <laughs> and there's a whole lot of teammates from the side of Tufts on the top side. Yon could be in a spot of trouble if they decide to go in on him. As Constantine Valdor hanging out, Kaisa staying in the middle lane. And it finally looks like the Leona's making the move. Constantine Valdor looking to get the stun off. And I don't think the Young's gonna be able to do anything. The damage from Argentine imports insane. Oh my God! There's nothing he can do right there. 100 to so zero instantly. Bad Vladimir and fighting the uh, bottom lane with Wally Renekton. Yeah, and now back to the middle lane. The Nautilus going in. Uh, ult from Morn trying to catch out Udyr. The kill comes through. Tower helping him out right there. Argentine import also here. Leona coming down from the top side with the flank of Felios. Nowhere for him to run. And with that. Tufts pick up a few free kills, extending their lead. It's now 11 to 7. This gold is about even, but uh, without those turrets taken from Tufts, that's an easy way for them to get that gold back. And uh, I don't, we again saw that fight in the bottom lane between the Alawi and the Renekton, so we didn't get to see the setup for that fight mid lane, but it just seems like Sheridan was going way too aggressive with that Udyr yeah. and Nautilus. Like, just so much CC from the side of uh, Tufts with that Leona and the uh, Skarner that, it, you know, uh, good job from Jiansu, you know, out playing with the flash and the ulti to keep himself safe, but uh, yeah, it just seems like they went a little too deep, and um, you know, while they're getting those towers back, they're gonna start, uh, you know, evening up that, or start getting a bit of a gold lead as they're up about 500 gold right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, with that though, it's still an even game. Oh, yeah, hopefully the next time the Nautilus ult comes through, the whole team doesn't tunnel vision since. As you mentioned, the CC from the side of Tufts, especially with Morn uh, in the middle lane. When he was there, had the ultimate Udyr, just pierced right through the heart, pulled under the tower. That's a free kill. And then Leona, of course, coming in with a clutch flank, uh, cutting off Sheridan's escape. Uh, I think that, yeah, they just tunnel visioned and didn't have the vision, I guess, uh, on Leona, on the rest of the team. Yeah, and this Alawi has actually been putting a ton of pressure. Uh, she's landed so many of those Test of Spirits that uh, she's been able to, you know, bully out the Renekton and the Vladimir. So while those two people are very strong, uh, Alawi's definitely applying a lot of pressure and uh, holding her own. Yeah, Alawi is for sure popping off. And now, oh my god, it didn't even have a second to get a word in, in the middle lane, Yon. 
just removed. And Leon with a preemptive strike with that solar flare. Nautilus is now caught out the damage coming through from that Kai'Sa. Strong Cat though, still pretty tanky, will eventually go down after a whole lot of gunfire from the Kai'Sa and the rest of the team. Now Laoi on the flank, ulting in with the flash as well. The damage will the healing be enough? She gets one kill, but is unable to stay alive. So a one for one. I wish she maybe stayed hidden up for a second longer, but still a pretty sick play. Yeah, Laoi, good job getting that return kill. Got the five person ulti, you know, and we've, we've all we've all been on the side of one of those five person ultis from Laoi. It can do a lot of damage. Good so job painful. from. Uh, Morning, and Constantine Baldor to lock her up, make sure she can do too much damage, but uh, she still picked up Jiansu, and while they got the dragon, uh, yeah, obviously still positive for Toss, they were able to get that pick in the mid lane, but uh, Udyr is chasing her now. He's <laughs> so fast, the phase rush is so funny to me. Just sprinting around, truly like a phoenix. And uh, Sheridan was kind of sitting in that bush earlier, you know, where uh, poor Leona solar flared without having it swept. So Leona knew exactly where they were, and uh, they were all grouped up, which made for an easy pick from the side of Tufts. Uh, obviously, Jansu wasn't in that fight uh, from the beginning, but once he got there, he was able to easily clean, clean up the Nautilus, and they were able to go to drag, and while they lost Jansu for it, uh, they're still going to take that any day of the week. Yeah, I think we're gonna t we're gonna pause at uh, nineteen thirty real quick. I think <laughs> apologies once again, ladies and gentlemen, for the slight technical difficulties. You know how things are. COVID can't be in person. It's tough to sync up sometimes, uh, but that's all right. <laughs> we still make the best of it, and we do get a pretty sick shot of the team beating up the Rift Herald with the rest of Tufts trying to get into position. Um, I think we're all at 1930 now. And with that, we're back into the game. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us. And it will be a free Herald. No, no, nobody on the side of Tufts wants to contest. The Vladimir is so large, but no ultimate uh, will make it difficult for a team fight to be successful. And a uh, good job from them, you know, using the reset to try to get vision around that, get the Rift Herald really quickly before the bear comes up. Uh, Obviously, it's a 19-minute Rift Herald, so it's not as powerful as a pre-14-minute one, but, you know, it's a free objective and can definitely turn into half a tower, so they'll definitely take it. Yeah, they can break through, maybe... I mean, if they get the middle lane tower, uh, and just start inching closer to Tuff's base, like, that'll open up so much for the side of Sheridan. Because with that Nautilus, they have a whole lot of pick potential, and same with the Yone. So without that extra second-tier tower, for the side of Tufts, if they do use that Herald there. Uh, it just really opens up the map and opens up a whole lot of opportunity. Right, and Alawi and Udi are kind of sitting in that top side, uh, trying to catch someone out, clear some vision, and oh Wallet's gonna God. try to go to Argentine Import. Yeah, Argentine Import, staying alive, doing a fair amount of damage himself against his Aphelios. The Moonlight Vigil is gonna come through. The Nautilus Ultimate will connect, followed up by a Dredge Line. He's trying to outplay him, and he does. Argentine Import with a sick kill on the Aphelios. He's just going to heal right back up off the Nautilus. The red buff slow will allow him to chase the Nautilus, but instead he decides to keep pushing this lane while the rest of the team will start the Baron. It is spotted out. We'll see how Sheridan responds. Allow he could go in here. The Solar Flare comes through. The healing won't be enough. It will be. I stand corrected. Oh my god, the damage from those tentacles just wipes Tufts right there. Now the Udi are looking to clean up the teleport from Argentine Import. Also now trying to clean up. Will he be able to? The healing won't be enough. And now Constantine Valdor will just have to run for his life, but he won't be able to. The speed on that deer. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, again, Tufts really not respecting that Alawi. Last time they were able to CC her up, but this time she was able to get that slam down using Gorgir to get some health and, uh, you know, Alawi with a five-man ulti does a ton of damage. Those tentacles just destroying the entire team, sustaining her back up. Uh, yeah, definitely not enough respect that, that for that There was just a like, split second where they looked like they had her. She was stunned up. She had like 400 health left. And then no damage came through. And then she woke up and then beat them up. <laughs> so uh, close. And uh, Sheridan's not doing this very fast. Oh this God, yeah, kind of died. Aaron, and Warren's in there. He still had full health. The rest of the team got there as well. Giannis is coming in. Taking out the Aphelios, he steals the Baron! And a huge turnaround from Tuss. And with that, they almost get an ace right back. A quadra kill for the Kai'Sa. 
Jiansu popping off right there. Thank you for putting me back on track. I was running a little replay in my head and wow. Quite the turnaround from Tufts after a sloppy engage on that Lowy. And now they can look to break into this base. Yeah, and I mean, Lowy didn't have ulti there and the Philios was like half held. It seems like a very greedy, barren attempt. The death timers weren't that long on the side of Tufts and uh, oh. good job from them having the uh, Kaisa get onto the back line, you know, collect the Philios and the, because Lowy didn't have that ulti and the, you know, massive damage from the Renekton, uh, very easy pick up from them. Uh -oh. Speaking of picks, they're looking to try and get more right here. Solar Flare from the Leon used defensively. Yon may have bit off a little bit more than he can chew. Takes the tether right back to his team. A flash in from the Udyr looking to stun up. The entirety of Tufts. Will they be able to get any kills just yet? Tufts trying to run away. They do have the Baron. They got to be careful here. But the follow up from the Aphelios locks down the entirety of Tufts. Vladimir Silver in the top side, but his team has fallen. Constantine Valda run down the middle lane with Easy Life hanging out in the river by the dragon. What a play from that Aphelios right there. Yeah, really good job from them. Uh, you know, keeping them locked up, not letting them uh, reset. Uh, this time it was them without the ultimates, or Tufts without the ultimates. So they're going to be able to use that Rift Herald to try to break down that base. And although they lost the Baron, uh, Another looks like they're reversal. about to get an inhib. Yeah, they break through that tower. They're onto the inhibitor. Argentine import is here. Could look to maybe 1v3, 1v4. <laughs> But I don't think that's gonna happen. Which is Easy Life on the dragon right now, trying to steal from the Udyr. Argentine of course, trying to draw some pressure. Udyr is down there right now. Easy Life threatening to kill him. Will try and switch focus. The dredge line connects though. Not much Easy Life to do. Trying to kill up with that Paul Amiga. Felios rotated down as well. And that Udyr. Oh my God, taking down from that ignite, but the turtle shell keeping him alive. Morn here is well. Same with Jansu. They're flying in. Argentine import taking out the Aphelios, and it's just reversal after reversal. <laughs> yeah, this game is uh, quite a bloodbath, uh, just picks after picks. Uh, Easy Life being a little greedy, trying to go for that dragon, oh, but uh, while well, they lose a dragon, they do Can have they the Allowy. Can they stop the ulti? Ah, uh, will they have enough damage? They do, thank god. <laughs> it's just a waiting game when that happens. Yeah, this time uh, only, I think she hit two people with the ultimate, so not anywhere near as good, and uh, it was a locker up. Oh, and then another pick coming in for the side of Sheridan. Unless Easy Life slicing and dicing away the chef, the Maestro, trying to get out of there as the Empowered Call to Me healing up. He does have some minions doing some damage as well. Will he be able to get out of there? He won't. He gets punched in the face by a flaming fist. But still, Tufts have a... Sizable lead, about 4k. They do have an inhibitor, but Sheridan has one to match. So, despite that gold lead, still kind of even. Yeah, this game is remarkably even because while this Yone is uh, behind, he's been using that ultimate and his Q to you know apply some utility, be some but someone who's like threatening that backline. And uh, I think he is a little bit close to 100% crit chance right now. So not many items to his name, but. Uh, Again, getting that knockup, setting up for that Alawi and that Aphelios to do a lot of damage, and the Udyr Nautilus just locking people down. The CC chain is disgusting. Which, yeah, no AP Udyr, full tank, but still does a good chunk of damage uh, with that Phoenix stance. He does have a Lich Fane in the inventory, so that might suggest oh. he's going for that, or sorry, a Sheen in that inventory, so it might suggest he's going for that Lich Fane, but. We're not quite sure yet. Like you said, he's very tanky and does a decent amount of damage. So definitely going to be scary for the side of Tufts to have that Udyr running around in your backline. Honestly, though, I feel like a full tank Udyr could still uh, 1v1 the Kai'Sa, though. <laughs> Tanks just aren't fair to me. <laughs> it doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Full tank will yeah. still do a whole lot of damage. For sure. <laughs> but yeah, Udyr, uh, with that... Chem tank could easily sprint in, lock down Jansu on the Kaisa, uh, wait for the rest of the team to follow up. Yon, as you mentioned, with the utility from his ultimate and tether, could look for an engaged, trying to have the Lowy position on the flank. She does have flash up, so for the next fight, a flash ultimate could come through and once again maybe wipe Tufts. Yeah, both teams taking their taking their turns with dealing with this inhib wave. Uh, we see uh, Tufts getting a little bit of push on the uh, side lanes uh, with um, Jansu and Easy Life down the bottom, but it looks like Yoni's gonna try to look for a pick. 
Yeah, it goes wide, won't be able to know more, and in the... Self, nothing coming through just yet. Uh-oh, Aphelios kind of all alone right here, caught out and deleted. The Solar Flare is gonna get the kill for the Leona. So, man, <laughs> Hyper Carry Leona could come through now. Argentine import up on the top side, looking to take out that inhibitor, applying a whole lot of pressure, allowing his team to push through this bottom lane. And I think that uh, Phyllis just had too much confidence there with the uh, red and white guns. While there's a powerful combo, it's not powerful enough to 1v5 there. And uh, he kind of just found himself all alone against a giant oh crocodile stun. The flash from Argentine import looking to take out Yoni. May have bit off a little bit more than he goes in. Here goes Golden as well, trying to weigh out the Ignite. Just needs to get one Q off. He does. The, he won't have enough damage, and Yoni gets the shutdown. Yeah, and. Uh, Nice try from uh, Argentine Import, but uh, did not respect the healing and brokenness that is Immortal Shield Bow. And, uh, <laughs> you know, good job from Yone and Udyr for punishing there. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. There's only one Grievous Wounds on either side. Both ADCs picked up an Executioner's Calling. Uh, which, for the Ophelia. Oh, I guess they both have Runes Hurricane, so. Alright, no, fair enough. Never mind. I guess you only really need it on one, since they can apply it to three people at once. <laughs> yeah, and Aaron, one thing to point out as uh, they start this uh, Baron, uh, Archie Import actually wasn't able to take out that inhib, so because he decided to go for that flash play, so there's still an inhib up in that top lane. Yeah, and speaking of things that are up, that blast cone is right there. They go over the wall more and get one into the lawn with the Renekton. Kaisa into the back lane, and the Renekton stole the Baron, and the Felios is gone. Allow, he's still putting in some work right here, though. With the Baron, though, they might be able to try and end the game if they can just get out of this fight. The Kaisa locked down and taking out Uyr, picking up the kill right there. Argentine Import trying to get out of there. Constantine Valder going in, locking down the rest of the team. And now it's a 1v3 for Argentine Import. He's trying to get the Blast going to safety. Makes it out trying to get to the speed boost from that. Little Rift Scuttler, will he have enough healing? The Udyr poking him out with those punches. Just needs one more Q to heal up. He won't be able to get it, and the Ace comes through for Sherrod. Yeah, and uh, while they're able to secure the Baron, that's not really the fight that uh, Tufts wants. You know, all of them in that little pit getting, you know, uh, hit by that Aphelios with fully stocked Chakram Gun and the Lowey doing that AoE damage. Uh, Jen had a really good, Jensu had a really good uh, kiting in the. Uh, middle of that fight there you know getting a couple of kills to himself but uh yeah. in the end uh they weren't able to do enough and Argentine import wasn't like there for the fight well he tp it in the end uh he found himself 1v3 and uh good ace from sheridan as they pick up another dragon yeah if tufts aren't coordinated for those fights it's just so difficult with uh the team fight capability on the side of sheridan now the we are trying to run away from more than a scorpion chasing a bear uh, that's a sight to be seen, <laughs> which he will be able to make out alive. Uh, but yeah, yeah without both picks, of really... have the, both of them oh, have sorry. that uh, movement speed <laughs> tank item, so they're both insanely fast. But in the end, Udyr is able to find a teammate and uh, get out. Yeah, which if Morin could have gotten that pick, maybe they could have looked to push into the base, trying to get those two inhibitors. But without picks and without uh, some well coordinated fights and teleports. Tufts are going to be in a whole lot of trouble uh, around these objectives. Just with that Alawi and Aphelios dishing out the damage, you have the Uter and Nautilus to peel for the Aphelios, and then Yone, as you mentioned earlier, can just be used for utility. Yeah, and um, with that third dragon taken up, as Double Lift always talks about, in three minutes, 55 seconds, you know exactly where Tufts going to be. They're going to be sitting on that dragon, make sure it doesn't go the way of... Uh, Sheridan, so uh, definitely going to be a fight around that. Um, other than that, there's two uh, open inhibs for the side of Sheridan, one on the side of Tufts, but it seems like for the last, like, you know, 10 minutes, the entire game, or not, probably not 10 minutes, but like, last five-ish minutes, the entire game has just been sitting on the Sheridan side of the map, so really good wave gear and pressure given from the side of Tufts, uh, largely due to Archie Import just pushing in those waves, and uh, yeah. Uh-oh, Easy Life up on the top side, could get caught out right here. Udyr just running circles around the Yon ultimate connects. Will we have enough healing to stay alive? The Call the Meat comes through, but it won't be enough. Bitter Juice picks up the kill while the rest of Tusk pushes through the middle lane and they get the inhibitor. Yeah, the Ignite there from Yone doing so uh -oh. much work, flying that 6% Grievous Wounds, but there's another fight Udyr. in the mid lane. Yeah, Udyr going in with the flank, the Nas ult connects. On to the Kai'Sa, same with the Dredge Line, nothing. 
Jatsu can do right there. The shutdown goes to the Nautilus. All these kills going to the supports. But regardless, a huge pick for the side of Sheridan. Now they can run it down the middle lane and get an inhibitor as well. Yeah, and I think that's just tough, like, you know, not playing 5-5. Five -five. Renekton got a pick. Argentine Import was uh, sitting in the bot lane, and he has 260 farm and 5 kills to his name. Huge. Three, almost 4 items, and uh, they're not realizing that, like, without him, they definitely can't win a fight, especially with so much follow-up and uh, pick potential from the side of uh, Sheridan. Double Deadman's played on their side. It's really fast uh, CC bots on their team. Yeah, they're running around, locking people down, uh, putting people to sleep, which is just so difficult, especially uh, as Kaya said, oh, hold on, Morin going in, take Alawi into the middle of his team, which is a bold strategy considering her, her ultimate can do a whole lot of damage, and she's just in the middle of the own ultimate as well, locking down the Vladimir, Vladimir trying to get in there, Isla takes up the Aphelios, but this uh, Alawi is still alive, dishing out the damage, those tentacles hurt, Vladimir also still alive, but Yon locks him down, and with that, it looks like Sheridan can just win this fight. They almost get the ace. Morin is able to slip out of the side, but I think this could be game. Some hefty respawn timers on the side of Tufts and a fair amount of damage for Sheridan right here. And with the Lich Bane on the Udyr, the GGs look to be coming out in chat. Yeah, and uh, the uh, Jen wasn't act Jensu wasn't actually in that fight, so... Uh... He got into the fight later, was able to ult onto the Aphelios, but without his like damage in the beginning of that fight, uh, it's very unlikely that uh, Tufts is going to be able to win that one. And uh, as Warren gets chased down in the open Nexus, it seems like uh, we're going to be going to game two. Yeah, which I'm a little surprised just looking at the ranks coming into this game and the match history. I thought, you know, Tufts would maybe be coming in a little bit stronger, but game one. Sheridan taking the victory, 30-29, to 29, back and forth, all the way to the end. Uh, so there's for sure some great gameplay to look forward to in Game 2. Yeah, I think uh, Tufts had a really good early game. A little, There were a couple of hiccups, but for the most part, they were taking control. And then there were uh, the mid-game, where they were just like getting caught out in like 5v4s or 4v3s, where they had slight uh, man disadvantage. And... Because of the dead man's play and uh, double dead man's play on the side of Sheridan, they were just able to, you know, uh, keep getting those picks, lock them down, and uh, punish them for, you know, having mispositioning. And uh, in the end, uh, the unstoppable like tank force of Nautilus, Udyr, and Alawi, who consistently ended up staying alive in those fights, uh, they were able to just win those fights and uh, power down mid lane and take the game. Yeah, I think observing Lane on that Alawi was the MVP. The damage he was dishing out with that ultimate, those tentacles slapping the ground, slapping Tufts, uh, was insane. He had, let me check. Uh, yeah, almost 40, basically 40,000 damage, which is ridiculous. Um, out damaging his entire team and all of Tufts. So I think they could maybe look to ban that out for game two. Uh, but, I mean, they banned out the Darius, the Garin, and the Mordekaiser, and the Alawi still was incredible. So, we'll have to see how Tufts adjusts their strategy for Game 2. Yeah, and um, as we get ready for Game 2, we're going to take another quick break. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back.
I think my neighbor's cooking something. Smells kind of good. <laughs> I digress, though. Uh, how about last game? I feel like Tufts had just such a strong early game with the dynamic duo, Leona Kaisa in the bottom lane, and then Renekton in the middle lane, plus uh, Morn on that Skarner could make some roams and ganks, but it just they couldn't keep that momentum going. Yeah, those late game fights. I think they just like got a lot. They got into a lot of fights they weren't oh, expecting, wow, and uh, there were some times they were like, they just like didn't respect the Alawi. You know, Alawi uh, getting a lot of that AOE damage down and very tanky, a lot of healing, and uh, that just put them a little bit further behind. And then late game, like I said, they just like took fights they weren't expecting. There were times where uh, Nautilus and Udyr just ran down with those uh, movement speed tank items. Uh, Udyr obviously very fast, and uh, they were able to get some picks when uh, Toss was still like off a of reset or the ADC or top laner weren't there yet. And with a lot of that uh, gold and damage sitting on the Vladimir and Kaisa, if they weren't there in the fights or were able to get yeah. picked off by that Udyr and Nautilus, they, there's no way they're going to win that fight. Yeah, hopefully for game two, they'll iron out the kinks in the communication. Since, as you said, like Vladimir and Kaisa were huge. Argentine import, if he was there earlier on in that Baron fight, could have easily wiped the team of Sheridan and helped burst down that Alawi, but just came in a little too late and found himself in a 1v3. And that wasn't the only time that happened, though. Uh, a lot of it, it was just a 4-1 split, and one side got caught out. Yeah, and uh, while there definitely were some good fights, good punishes from the side of uh, Tufts, uh, they sadly were not able to uh, win the game. And um, it looks like the players are getting ready for the... Uh, draft uh, two quick or really quick bans from both sides Ryan, off Vladimir at least taken away from Sheridan with the Darius Udyr Garrett taken away from Ooh, Puffs. the deer gotta yeah. go to the John Deere classic <laughs> and uh, I would like again the all off Elise and Darius Garrett bans uh, very good bans for very good players on their side uh, Vladimir and Udyr nice respect bans from last game but Vladimir did a lot of damage the last uh Last game allowed for the Lowey not to be able to snowball as hard, and the Udyr, like we said, just ran it down big, getting those picks, dead mans, plus the Force Nature, yeah. plus the Phase Rush, plus the Bear Stance, just so much movement speed. And despite having like a lack of magic damage, they still just plowed through them in those fights. Uh, those tentacles, just so painful. Painful to watch, too, when they just <laughs> nuking the entire team. But Yeah, but for the most the part, they're. They're uh, just going for the, the salty run thing. back. Aphelios, Kaisel, Nautilus. Thing. Yeah. What? Well, hopefully, yeah, maybe it just boils down to communication. And they're like, you know what? We'll get them. Run it back. Run it back. Yeah. We'll get them game two. <laughs> and uh, Kaisel, Leona, you know, they got that first blood really early and were able to get the lead on True. the Aphelios, Nautilus. And uh, while the Udyr was able to punish them a little time, a little bit for uh, playing so far up, uh, they did, like, overall win lane, so... And the Hecarim is picked up this time for the Sheridan. Uh, Hecarim Ooh. is again one of those really fast junglers and has a ton of gank presence and uh, uh, you know can lead for some massive team fights with that ulti and uh, definitely a pick that Morn likes to pick up. But yeah. this time it's on Sheridan's side. I've seen Morn's Hecarim quite a lot. It's super strong, but also Sheridan's jungler has a, a good chunk of games on Hecarim as well. So. I don't think it'll be anything to scoff at. We already saw this Udyr last game, which was crazy. So imagine that, running fast and doing even more damage. <laughs> so that'll be something to watch out for, especially early on. Maybe they'll try and counteract the pressure from that Kaiso. Yeah. And uh, the, the Skarner uh, actually is a Kha'Zix from the side of Tufts. Uh, it was a uh, bit of a... I think glitch from the uh, draft program, or they blocked the wrong champion, but it is being cleared up, and um, yeah, that is instead a Kha'Zix, not a Scar. Okay. I have me worried there. It's like another, another go at the Scarner. All right, Kha'Zix. Yeah, Morn's Kha'Zix. Uh, just obliterates people. 100 to zero on that champion. Uh, okay. I'll be curious to see what he builds. Maybe Eclipse to try and wade through some of that damage, or could go for that Dust Blade to just try and chain kill the entirety of Sharon. 
and uh, Morton's Cossack is definitely a very strong pick. Uh, I remember back in the day when we were both in middle school, we had the Night Flu 3, Cossacks, you know. Uh, Morton got a lot of games in then, and brilliant. since then he's been a very formidable Cossacks player, and uh, if he gets ahead, he can definitely uh, 1v9 this game. Yeah, which... They do have the Nautilus and Hecarim so far to lock him down if he does get ahead. So I'll be curious to see what else Sheridan decides to pick. Um, I wonder if... Okay, there's the Mordekaiser coming in for the top. And that's also on his OP.GG. Right underneath the Darius Garin goes Mordekaiser. And then Alawi is just some deep pocket pick. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and the Camilla is something that RGG Import has been relatively proficient on, but without the Galio, they don't have the threat of that combo, and uh, Mordekaiser oh, yeah, is going to be, that. like I said, a strong pick from the side of Sheridan Poplaner, who has a lot of games on it. And the Sile is picked up for the side of Sheridan. Uh, so, you know, with that Camille, the Yona ulti, Sile is going to have some uh, decent pick potential. Yeah, I swear, every time I see Camille Galio, I never see an actual Camille Galio comp. No, it seems people just get locked down and too focused on their lanes and no picks actually come through and then the Galliol does happen, but only to disengage on the ADC. But regardless, a Diana will come through for Tufts to try and beat up that Silas in the 1v1, which I think that's a pretty even matchup. Diana does have a little bit more damage, but Silas, if he chooses to max Kingslayer, can sustain through it uh, and hang out in lane for a little bit longer. Yeah, and uh, Diana, again, has a decent ulti for the Silas to take up. So Silas will be able to take some relative three out of five are like relatively impactful ultis. Or I guess, sorry, four out of five are relatively impactful ultis. So Silas going to have a field day with that. But definitely going to be a very interesting game as uh, the players start jumping into real champ select. Yeah, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Uh, do we think we're going to see another first blood from the bottom lane or maybe switch it up uh, in the middle lane with the Silas into Diana? Uh, I don't know. I'm honestly thinking that uh, Sheridan's going to play a little more passive now that they have, um, now that they got that first blood against them last time. Maybe we won't see um, level one Nautilus hooks leading to Leona. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, no. But with that Hecarim picked up, you know, there is a chance that they try to uh, go for an aggressive play early, especially if Hecarim takes Ghost. They can get that Ghost into E uh, plus, like, Nautilus, Chain CC to, you know, walk down the ball lane and get first blood there. So definitely, uh, definitely going to be very interesting. Uh, maybe we might have as much of an explosive game as we did last time. Probably not as much with the, um, without the Renekton and Yone lane, where Renekton just kind of bullied them out as, oh, uh, looks like there was a technical difficulty or something uh oh potential miss pick perhaps uh well up on the top lane though i feel like we could see a whole lot of action with the camille mordekaiser last game uh, i was vladimir into a Lowy, which is super safe for vladimir and kind of just a farming lane for both sides so with both of these melee champions looking to dish out some damage and trade some blows I think we could maybe see a first blood in the top lane, especially if one of the junglers decides to show up. Yeah, and um, it turns out it was just a mispick, so they're going to restart oh. the draft. and uh, <laughs> Third time's the charm. Game yep. We'll get there. One day we'll get back on the rift. Wow. But for yeah. now, one more champion select. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you who are wondering, the reason they do the pro draft first is because... Uh, it allows them to have more like flexibility with pick order in case uh, not everyone has uh, the all the champions. For example, if um, Sheridan wanted to pick that first pick of Philios, but their top player doesn't have a Philios, uh, they wouldn't be able to unless they use Pro Draft. So they just use that first, and then they pick in uh, their own champions once they get into champ select, real champ select. Yeah, and looking at the champs they did end up picking, I think that. The team fight from, I don't know, because I was going to say Sheridan's is a little stronger. Just with Silas, the utility from those ultimates could choose Diana to lock down multiple members or pick up Camille or Leona to look for a pick to start it off. You obviously have Hecarim with that multi-man fear, and then Aphelios once again can just rain fire from the back line. We'll see if he opted into phase rush close to the Conqueror. But on the side of Tufts, 
it seems kind of just more like hit and run to me. They have the Skyner and Camille jumping in, jumping out. Kaisa Leona looking to get a quick kill before kind of backing out from a fight. So I think once again, Sheridan will have the upper hand in the team. Yeah, uh, obviously, uh, I don't want to write off Toph's pick. Toph's comp immediately. Uh, the Kazus Camille can definitely uh, lead to some dangerous uh, right, 2v1s Kazakhs. or 2v2s in the top lane. Keep saying so. Um, <laughs> yeah. Look at the pro and, draft. Uh, That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like you said, Still jumping uh, in the jumping Jansu, out. Constantine Balder, Kaisa Leona is definitely very strong. So, Yeah. So vision for Tufts will be key for this game. Since if they can pick him apart before a fight even starts, they'll be miles ahead of Sheridan and can easily take out objectives and start building an advantage. So, yeah, we'll see how things transpire in the early game. I think it really depends on how safely Sheridan can play. As we saw last game, Tufts does like to be aggressive early on. So if Sheridan can hold on through the early game, not give up too much gold, uh, they could come back swinging in the mid game when the fights start breaking out. Yeah. And uh, that's going to conclude champ select. Um uh they're gonna start getting into game there's gonna be spectator delay so uh we shall be back shortly uh on summer's rift for game two between sheridan and tufts
for game two on Summoner's Rift. This game is kind of for all the marbles for day in this tournament, uh, which right now it's 1-0 Sheridan. So a lot's kind of riding on this game too. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Sheridan's going to go for a five stack in the top lane. Uh -oh. Uh, uh oh, Strong like Cat walking forward. Vision, Argentina, though. wake up! No, the dredge line connects. Argentina for over the ball, though, thank God. Okay. Yeah, very clutch uh, <laughs> hook from. Very clutch E from the Camille, uh, getting out of that one, using the second part of it to get away. And uh, nice attempt from Sheridan, but uh, in Gee. the end, uh, you're not going to be able to do anything as uh, Tufts is going to use his time to get some vision in the jungle. Yeah, that quick ward into dredge line. Thank God Argentine, Argentine import wasn't away from the keyboard right there. Uh, <laughs> that would have been an unfortunate first blood. Especially into yeah. this Mordekaiser. If he gets a little bit ahead, uh, he can just easily force extended trades. And he wins those with his passive doing that damage uh, over time. So Argentine import has to be careful here not to let this Mordekaiser get ahead. Otherwise, he could, could start to snowball and then it would be maybe a reverse of last game. Yeah, and um, other than that, uh, both uh, both junglers are going to start on their blue side with uh, Hecarim on the top and Kha'Zix on the bot uh, as everyone gets back to lane, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so far, no, no more cheese, no level lines in the bottom lane. Uh, so for now, people are just farming up, looking to get those level 2 power spikes, especially in that bottom lane. Once Leona and Kaisa hit that, it's going to be very dangerous for this Aphelios and Nihilus. And already up in the top lane, you can see the extended trades from that Mordekaiser once you get that Conquer proc, like almost taking out Argentine import. If he had Ignite, he could have maybe flashed and went for it. And there's that level two all in already in the bottom lane. Strong Cat has to dredge line to the tower. The Ignite taking down one auto from Jansu will do it. The Ignite giving the first blood to the Leona. And a strong start once again for the Tufts bottom lane. Yeah, good job from them, you know, getting that uh, level two er level two earlier and Leona instantly EQing, uh, getting the Nautilus, getting the Halo Blades off, and uh, getting that first blood. Uh, I also want to quickly say, good job from that Mordekaiser for, you know, punishing the fact that Arch and Import had to take that E level one to get away, and uh, wasn't uh, much Arch and Import could do in that extended trade. Yeah, good catch. Absolutely, it makes it very, very difficult to which right now with his level three, he can now try and get a kill on this Mordekaiser and he does not anything observing lane can do to really get out of that situation. Too far forward, too low on health and just chunked out. So well played by Argentine Import. Oh, there's a trade in the middle lane going on. Easy life, gonna farm up on these caster minions. And Morn hanging around up by the top side. We'll see if maybe once Argentine Import teleports in, we'll see a gank. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ar the TP was just extended from uh, the Mordekaiser, so uh, if they're able to get this uh, kill in the top lane, it'd be really big. Uh, there's no ward there for observing lane in the top side brush, but instead yeah. it looks like they're going to try to make a play in the mid lane with Constantine Valder also there. Yeah, Hecarim is coming in as well, but I think Leona being there gave it away. <laughs> so no kills are going to come through just yet. Now up into the top side, Argentine Import jumping right on top of this Mordekaiser, beating him up, but He's swinging right back that Conquer, giving him a decent amount of healing right now. The solo hit on the Q also does a whole lot of damage. Trying to flash after him, won't be able to get there. And Morn gets the kill, a 3-0 start at four minutes. Not too shabby. Yeah, this is just a uh, really good laning inside of Tufts, you know, uh, getting two kills in the top lane, one in the bot lane, and uh, without that TP from the side of uh, Mordekaiser, Camille's gonna be able to push this in and get a really big advantage, and uh, yeah, I think that wave is gonna crash. Uh, yeah, it just about crashes nice. on that tower, and uh, Mord's also gonna get a lot of that farm in the uh, topside jungle without Hecker being able to reciprocate. Yeah, and now Argentine Import picking up that Sheen. <laughs> that just—it's not fair. Every time I see a Gnosis with a Sheen or anyone with an early, Sheen, I just want to give up. It, huh. I feel like it's way too powerful early on, and so so far though. Uh, Across the board, the lanes are doing quite well, but we kind of saw this last game. So the main concern is if Tufts will be able to, to transition into the mid game, avoid those team fights where they may not have uh, as strong of a fight. And hopefully if they can avoid that, 
keep this momentum, they can close this one out with a win. Yeah, it looks like Hecarim's coming in the bot side. Oh, kind of repeated what yeah. we saw in game one. Locked down, the stun coming through before Hecarim can get the knockback. Constantine Valder may be sacrificing his life right here, but a whole lot of damage coming in from Jansu right there. Gets the kill in return. He's able to make it back to his tower safely. A nice one for one. Morn is now also here, not spotted out. He places the pink board just to double check the dredge line from Strong Cat, trying to save his ADC's life. He will be able to save the Aphelios, but he won't be able to save himself. Now up to the top side, this Mordekaiser in a 1v2. He just has to try and walk it into the river, try and find a way back to base, but he won't be able to. And then in the bottom side, looks like Jansu may be overstepped as, uh, excuse me, Silas roamed down. Yeah, and a good job from uh, Sheridan trying to get a return kill in the bot lane with that Silas room, but uh, Diana roams top, and uh, you know with that failed Hecarim gang, Tulsa's just going to get so much, and this Mordekaiser has 25 farms, going to have another like 12 or so minions crashing into his tower, and uh, he does a cannon minion, so he won't lose all of it, but or he might he might still lose all of it? I don't know, uh, as we'll we see. move the camera away. Uh, <laughs> I love directed camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, strong gameplay from Argentine Import, shoving in that wave, uh, removing all those minions from this Mordekaiser's lane, making it difficult for him to find some sort of footing to stay relevant. Since for now he's 0 3, only has a pair of boots and a crystal against a sheen, a longsword, and a dagger, which is scary. Uh oh, South's going in onto this Diana in the middle lane, and he obliterates her with the tower. Might be able to get the kill the moot. The minions! <laughs> they do it. Easy life. Get in the return. Another one for one coming through. And so far, a high kill game. 10 kills, seven minutes in. That's what I like to see. Yeah, but there still is a 2k goal lead for the side of Toss, and uh, they've just been playing really well, uh, you know. Good, good job in the outplay in the ball lane with the Leota and Kaisa like, kiting back, getting those uh, like seven or eight Kaisa stacks onto the that Hecarim, and uh, now they've secured the dragon as well. So overall, very strong performance from them. They uh, had a ton of presence in all three lanes, and uh, yeah, this uh, looks like a very strong start. For them. Yeah, which the early dragon is not something we saw last game. Sheridan. Got it, despite the early pressure that Tufts had. So I'm happy to see them pick it up this game using that early pressure to their advantage. And now they got two members in the bush waiting to jump on this Silas. He's gotta be careful here. I don't think they have a ward though. And uh, now they could be looking for a dive on the, oh no, recall finally came through. <laughs> Looks like they're gonna dive uh, Argentine import. I guess recalls across the board, no funny business just yet, unless just as I open my mouth, they are going in on the top lane. Argentine Import jumping in on top of Mordekaiser, but the ultimate keeping them locked down. The Q connects, and that'll be a nice kill for Observing Lane. And nothing happening in the middle lane. Silas sniffing out Morn's roam into his territory, and no other kills will come through just yet. Yeah, and really good job from the Mordekaiser, you know, using the ultimate to try to get that advantage in that 1v1, and... Uh... While he was put so far behind early, uh, it's about even in farm, has a kill to himself, and is doing really strong, but Morn's yeah, coming Morn's in top lane. No trying to get the burst the damage off. Nothing he can do. A whole lot of nothing across the board. Everybody just kind of gets caught out, and they don't have any options. Uh, so yeah. much lockdown, Mordekaiser. It looks like he has the flash up, so I'm kind of surprised that didn't get used. I think it was a little greedy on his part. But now some more action in the middle lane. Argentine imported going in the party, locking down this Silas. And that'll be Argentine Import's second kill of the game. 2-1-2 two, and two with... Well, now he's tied up on CS. He had a pretty sizable advantage earlier, though, on the minions. But he's just going to get larger and larger. And the Camille, once Camille gets big, just 100-0, the one shot and the true damage that comes through is ridiculous. Yeah, and talking about 100 to 0, this Kha'Zix is 3 and 0. And uh, like I said, if Morgan get ahead on the Kha'Zix, he, he is very good at that champion. And there's a chance that he can kind of one me down this game. He might not have to, as Tufts is uh, up oh, about 2k gold, but uh, definitely very strong. And uh, I really like that play from the Camille going mid lane, you yeah. know. In the last few, few matches, one thing that they have, like, you know, struggled on a little bit is, uh, you know, 
taking plays into, you know, Mia pings, taking plays without knowing where everyone was. And uh, here they kind of uh, turned that on his head as uh, using the recall from Camille to have her go mid and pick up that kill at Haas. Yeah, and then especially last game, uh, Argentine import just felt kind of disconnected from the team, always uh, a one four split. So I'm happy to see, as you said, that early Rome is walking it down the middle lane, giving a nice, easy kill, uh, which is a little bit of a change up from the last game. As I said, he did have the teleport up. So if things went awry, could easily make it back to the lane. And now Morn coming back in for this Mordekaiser. He might be able to make it back to the tower. Alt Morn He's going to choose the all in still has his flash i'm trying to pull him underneath the tower more and flashes forward gets the kill he's on a rampage 4-0 with a 300 gold bounty this is not yeah. what you want to see if you're sheridan and with the eclipse already picked up for him he was able to win inside the mordekaiser ulti and uh you know while there's a tablet on the side of uh mordekaiser uh, he's able to pick uh -oh. that up and easy life's able yeah. to get a nice solo kill on the jungler catching him out that crescent moon connection taking out that horse Nowhere is safe on the map right now for Sheridan, not even their side of the jungle. <laughs> With Tufts at 11 kills, 11 minutes into the game, and Argentine Import looking to add one more to that scoreboard. Yeah, and with that Rift, Rift Herald getting taken up in the top lane, it seems like they're just going to play a good job of extending out that gold lead, and uh, with the Dragon coming up 46 seconds, I can assume that's where Morton's going to try to go to next. Yeah, hopefully with this momentum they have, they'll just continue to extend their lead with that dragon. Now Arch locking down that Mordekaiser. More again, coming back from nice sidestep by Argentine Import. Does have Herald. They could look to just try and bully this Mordekaiser out of the lane, collect on some plate gold, and really invest into this Camille. Uh, since Morn for sure has way too much gold at this point, being 4-0. Yeah, but I think there was a little bit of a communications disconnect there as Camille didn't have all mana and Palace actually started the recall before she went in. So it seems like maybe they were trying to go a little, Camille's uh -oh. a little overzealous there, but uh, Silas looks like there's going to be a play in the bottom, bottom lane. lane. Still the Leona ultimate will be able to lock down, but he won't be able to. The cash is if Nautilus uh, depth charge connects. Hecarim is also in this fight. They're trying to turn it around. Leona charging forward with that shield up. Argentine import also here. Jansu takes out Strong Cat. And just like that, a solid turnaround from Tufts in the bottom lane. Teleport for teleport, turning it around. Yeah, with those uh, two teleports extended from uh, Tufts, they were able to pick up that kill and now turn to this dragon, get that early 2 0, start that dragon stacking. And um, looks like Asaz uh -oh. trying to pick up the Camille in the ball lane. Flash forward from that Ophelio, it's a little bit of a waste since now they're. They're way too far for it. Easy Life just gonna walk up looking to take out Amelios. The damage coming through is absurd. He's now also 4 1 and 1. At this point, I don't know what Sheridan can really do. They have to hope Tufts make mistakes when they try to dive. They gotta hope that Tufts give over a couple bounties or something, since right now they're not letting their foot off the gas. Yeah, but one thing to point out plates taken down from that top lane tower and Morty has also have 86 to 86 CS to his name and uh you know we saw last last game what this top laner could do with um a little bit uh we'll see if he has the same amount of uh presence in this game as he did in game one yeah and then obviously with Mordekaiser and his ultimate uh it really allows him to kind of play from behind because he can just pick and choose a 1v1 uh, anytime, any place, really. But right now, he's choosing up in the top lane, trying to take out Argentine Import. He does not have flash, so Mordekaiser kind of has, has him locked down. Bitter Juice on the Hecarim is also here trying to knock him over with that horsey. Argentine Import does escape, it looks like. Easy Life coming in clutch right there. And the stun from Argentine Import collects him another kill. And right now, Tufts are just so far ahead. Silas looking to try and pick up. Uh, 150 gold bounty, but the abducted Scott is not close enough. And with that, they walk away scot free. Yeah, that was a really good job from uh, Tufts there, having the Diana come up there to try to help out after that uh, ulti came down. And we saw the Hecarim immediately dive onto Camille, but uh, Camille was able to use the ulti to dodge out some of the damage, uh, hook shot away, and then the Diana follow up with that ulti uh, just cleaned up that fight. Uh oh, Sal's still hanging around. <laughs> Oh, spotted out though. 
from the Argentine import with that Trinity Force. We're just putting in the work. Leona is also here, but a solid uh, Hextech Ultimatum from the Silas allowing him to dodge that Zenith Blade, but this, the kill still comes through for the side of Tufts. And now with three members up in the top lane, they could look to try and dive Mordekaiser. His ult is on cooldown, but it looks like the recalls are going to come through. Yeah, but uh, on the other side, Sheridan is able to get that bot tower, uh, you know, get a little more gold on the Aphelios, but with the 5k goal lead and 5-1 uh, Dyna, 4-0 Kha'Zix, uh, future's not looking too bright for this, Aphelios. No. It's tough. Uh, we'll see how Easy Life fares in a 1v3, it looks like. He does have a fair amount of damage, obviously 5-1 and 2, trying to make it back. No tower is there, the Moonlight Vigil coming through, doing damage from range, not letting Easy Life get close to this Aphelios. He's trying to make it in there, trying to find an angle, but he's shut down, giving over a nice chunk of gold to the enemy's AD carry. Yeah, and if there's a way for Aphelios to get back in this game, 700 gold shutdown is definitely going to help out with that. Yeah, he does have a Kraken Slayer. I wonder if a Gale Force wouldn't be better this game. A little extra mobility to try and dodge. Uh, the Kha'Zix, the Diana, the Camille, pretty much everybody on the side of Tufts. Yeah, but uh, I agree, the extra mobility might be nice, but um, if he's able to go off, I guess the extra damage from Kraken Slayer might be good. Speaking of going off, they're all in and Silas in the middle lane. The team was there, but they couldn't do anything. They just had to stand back and watch their teammate get blown to smithereens. A solid solar flare catching Silas off guard. Will that Tufts another kill and a tower? Yeah, and Tusk comms are so explosive, so much dive with the Kha'Zix, Leona, Diana, Camille, Kaisa. They all just like dash onto them. Uh-oh. Morn caught out right here, but unless Argentina Bella Felio blown up. Same with Strong Cat. Easy life up in the top lane in a 1v1 trying to run away from this Mordekaiser. A solid dash to get some health back, or excuse me, a shield. And now he's looking for the out cove out play while the rest of the team just runs it down the middle lane. A little bit of ARAM. They don't have any minions really to get this tower though. So this could be an overextension. However, Hecarim and Sauce are the only ones available. They could just be looking to extend this lead. The W goes wide. So close. And now they're caught between a base and a tower. He needs to hit the bridge line. Flash for Nautilus connects onto this Leona. Leona taken underneath the tower. There's nowhere for Constantine Battler to run. He's knocked up and knocked back down with the Silas getting himself his second kill of the game, slowly clawing his way back into this, slowly catching back up to this Diana. Yeah, this game is just, again, another bloodbath. A lot of kills on the side of Tufts, but, uh, you know, these, uh, Sheridan's doing a good job of trying to get some picks on the backside or uh, on them trying to get a reset. Good job from uh, Easy Life, uh, you know, outplaying that top lane, you know, not falling to the uh, Mordekaiser ulti, but, uh, you know, I have to apologize. I kind of bleaked there. And, you know, when I cl my eyes opened again, the feelers were just, just gone. I guess Camille Kha'Zix, like, whew, blew him so up much so damage. fast. Oh my god. And then it. If Diana gets like a Lich Ban or something, even more burst. Yeah. There's nothing this Ophelios uh, can buy to give him enough protection. <laughs> I mean, like, short of just like Gargoyle Stone yeah. Plate Warmogs or something. Sort of full tank, Aphelios. Yeah. <laughs> well, Shelly is up for now. Still a minute left on that, so I would love to see Tufts pick that up, try and shove into this base. If they can get a charge off on that middle tower, break in, open up that inhibitor, that would give them a whole lot of agency super early in this game, uh, allow them to pick yeah. up a third dragon maybe, or even look for an early Baron. Yeah. And uh, it's worth to mention, you know, this Mordekaiser is doing a good job, you know, pushing in those lanes, you know, being a presence that has to be answered and can't just be instantly picked off because of the ulti, so, uh, you know, he's doing some work, you know, he's trying to pick off Easy Life sitting in this bush. Uh -oh. He might just be able to do it, he has a whole lot of damage, a whole lot of Omni down to half, almost into the tower range, pulls him into it, but the smackdown obliteration from that Mordekaiser now fight breaking out around the Baron hit Hecarim going in trying to find that uh Kha'Zix but he won't be able to be able to lock him down Kaisa picking up the kill now Mordekaiser is here teleporting into this fight flashing forward trying to chase after Giantsu whittling him down with that passive to obliterate connects once again and the dredge line onto Morn as well 
This Mordekaiser just having a field day with his abilities and passive. The damage coming through is insane. He's looking for another one. Strong Cat steals the way as the Kingslayer from Silas shuts down Morn. And this is kind of what I was worried about. Uh, Tuff's getting a little too aggressive. A solid teleport from the Mordekaiser. And now Sheridan may have found a path back into this game. Yeah, while well, his Mordekaiser was 2 and 6, he had the extra stats from the Diana. And, uh, you know, John Tzu was, Jen Tzu was just like sitting, taking all of that damage from the Mordekaiser. No one was able to help him because of the Silas. Nautilus just holding uh, Argentine Import and uh, Morn at bay. And, you know, I mean, this is kind of what happened last time, and like yeah. I was talking about, this Mordekaiser is staying in this game, you know, getting those picks, pushing those silence, staying relevant, so that if he's able yeah. to do exactly what he just did, you know, it's a path back for Sheridan. Yeah, which is super impressive considering how far behind he was early on. Like at the four minute mark, he was down a whole lot of CS, a couple levels as well. And despite that, he just, yeah, as you said, kept pushing the side lanes, munching on some minions, building up the fat in his body for those fights and you saw him swinging in that one right there and he just put in the work yeah uh, but then again you know they're still up 5k gold for Tufts uh, they are very strong two items for the side of uh, more and two items for the side of Jensu and uh, it's definitely going to be a tall order for Sheridan to get back in this game but uh, if they do it's probably going to be on the backs of this uh, level 13, 144 on Mordekaiser. <laughs> they throw them all into his item pouch, which it looks like the oh, Argentine import was hanging around, slinking around. Could have gone in, but his team really isn't there. And a 1v1 with this Mordekaiser is not something you want right now. And I think for Tufts, they just need to get as much vision as possible into the enemy jungle, try and take out the weak, weak links. Excuse me, but Silas. Like starting Apollos. Baron for Sheridan. Yeah. Mordekaiser doesn't have teleport, he's gonna have to walk it in, but Tufts isn't nearby either. It looks like they're just trying to bait it out. They might be able to catch out Camille right here, but a nice collapse is being set up for Tufts, unless they're the one. The counter collapse, Hecarim taking out Easy Life right there. Afeli is picking up the kill. And uh, what looked like such a nice flank just went awry so quickly. And now they're on to the Baron. Well, the rest of Tufts is just going to run it down the middle lane. Aram versus Baron Rush. We'll see which one will work out in the end. And it looks like uh, Tufts does have the Rift Tail. They're going to throw that down in the middle lane. Baron finally falls. They do have the reduced recall now. So they will prevent uh, a further push. We'll see if Shelly can get one more charge off. Oh, and it, they get it. And is that another tower? It is. Well, one Nexus Tower already down at 23 minutes into the game, but Sheridan does have Baron buff, and the gold gap is just growing smaller and smaller. As Argentine Import starting off the fight, the chain CC coming through onto the entirety of the team, and more into the backline trying to assassinate a Felix, but he isn't able to, uh, but he does Strong Cat doing his very best, but it's not enough. And now Silas trying to hold on to the front line. The Mordekaiser's in this fight, knocking people's heads off. Silas with a clean double kill. And it's a two for two for now. Dragon is up. We'll see who decides to go for it. But with Mordekaiser and Silas alive, the carries for Sheridan. I think Tufts might want to just back off this one. Yeah, and it's a good job from Sheridan, you know, getting that vision early in the top side. But Tufts, you know, recognizing that, you know, Easy Life just got picked off. They really can't walk into that jungle. Just put that Rift Herald down mid and, I guess, take a Nexus Tower. So. Uh, overall, you know, it is still a Baron buff given over to Sheridan, but Tufts, you know, able to find something out of that play. And uh, while there's just two for two in the jungle, um, you know, it seems like Sheridan is uh, slowly getting back in this game, but they're still staring down at Soul Point. Yeah, Soul Point will be very annoying to play against, uh, especially with Leona and Camille looking to lock down people as often as possible. Their ultimates on a lot shorter of a cooldown, plus that extra mobility once they use them uh, will be quite dangerous. And then even with Morn, you saw him almost assassinate Aphelios immediately, but with the extra agency that Cloud Soul could give him, he may find more opportunities to do so. Yeah, and uh, Gensu feels, seems like he wasn't able to do much in that last fight. Uh, he put a decent amount of damage down, but I don't know, just against that Mordekaiser and Silas, they just do so much and able to do, uh, able to tank up so much, so. Seems like he needs a little bit of help, you know, dealing with those people diving him in the back line. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like for Sheridan, their battle plan is a little easier. They can just kind of try and fight front to back or peel for the carries. And then on the side of Tufts, they really have basically kind of three assassins with that Camille, Kha'Zix, Diana. And then Leona is really kind of the only one who's there for the Kai'Sa. So it makes those extended fights a lot more difficult. And if you can't burst them down immediately, uh, it's you know you find yourself in a whole lot of trouble. Yeah. Good job from Arjun and Import. You know, imagine this, but it seems like they're gonna try uh, to go for a flash play from Silas. Yeah, easy life getting caught out by that solar flare from Silas, but the Cloud Dragon helping him out. The winds quicken, and he is able to make it back to the tower. It looks like as Arjun and Import with lines of pressure in the top lane, forcing some recalls while the rest of the team plays footsie. Mordekaiser find himself in a one v one with. Constantine Valdor, but Diana is there locking him down, but it's not enough. The healing is insane. The Conqueror won't be enough for observing the lane. Hecarim on the run. Morn picking up a kill out of nowhere as well. And a nice double kill for the side of Tufts. They can look for the bottom lane tower. If they put three members there and Argentine Import keeps pushing that top lane in, they can maybe break open this base a little bit more. Yeah, and uh, because of the, uh, like, you know, uh, canceled resets. Uh, two people had to stay back because um, you know it's not like Nautilus and Ophelia and Silas were able to stop their recall. Otherwise, Camille's just gonna take the base. And so, good job from Tufts, you know, getting some picks off of that. And uh, with this pressure they're applying, they get to you know have priority on these objectives which are coming up in just two minutes. And because Cloud Drake and Baron are coming at the same time, you know exactly where Sheridan's gonna have to go. They have to go and stop that soul, which means that. They're gonna have a choice of whether to, you know, bait them into this top side, into this bot side drag, or if they go into the top side and try to just take this Baron away while they give up Soul or while they give up a dragon. Yeah, and regardless, it's gonna be super difficult since they just don't have a whole lot of vision, right? Now. Um, well, I guess neither side does really, as Strong Cat disconnects <laughs> in disgust at the lack of vision, um, which I actually am a little surprised that Tusk doesn't have more wards in that bottom side jungle considering they're clearing out so many of the enemy team's wards uh so fair number of blind spots on the map for both sides which uh i think just could take advantage of trying to position well and get some picks like we we're talking about uh as sheridan try to brace themselves for one of these objectives yeah, and uh, good job from RGD Import, recognizing that the top that this top side is kind of dark for him. Uh, people can be coming to uh, try to catch him out, so uh, uh -oh. he's going to back Morning off. But... Hit with that Mordekaiser pull, he's able to jump away. And Argentine Import in the pit all alone, locking down the Hecarim, jumps over the wall to safety. And so far, just some light skirmishes going on. Nobody wants to fully commit just yet. Uh, the dragon will and be with this up wave in going 45. up to inhib. Uh, Sheridan's yeah. gonna have to answer that, which might give a window for Tufts to kind of walk in and get some vision. Ping's coming out. They want to try and pick somebody off in this jungle. We'll see what Argentine Import decides to do. Trying to lock down Nautilus, but the dredge line buffer takes him to safety. The soul flare connects on the Silas Nautilus. Silas goes more into the back line, trying to take out this Hecarim. And Silas taking the Diana ultimate, doing a fair amount of damage, but it won't be enough as he's taken down and shut down. And the rest of the team. Following suit, Argentine Import cutting through that Mordekaiser Morn picking up the kill. And that'll be an ace, and I think that'll be the game. They have a couple minions. There's only one Nexus Tower available and about 30 second respawn timers. And quite the change from game one. Tufts, strong early game, transitioned beautifully into the mid and late game. And with that, they're gonna take game two, and the dream is still alive. Yeah. Really good fight there from Toss in the end, you know, being hit very standard, having that Leona finding the Silas out, and while there was a stopwatch taken away, uh, Jansu was able to dish out a ton of damage, a lot of dive from the Warren and the Diana, and uh, while uh, Camille was answering the Mordekaiser in the top lane, that's exactly who they want to answer that Mordekaiser. They don't want the Leona who's trying to peel for the Leo uh, Kaisa to end up in the Mordekaiser also. They don't want the Diana who's making those big engages. They don't want the Kha'Zix who's diving the back lane, or uh, obviously the worst would be the Kai'Sa, but instead it's Argentine Import, who can actually match him in that uh, Death Realm, stall him out, and meanwhile they're able to win the 4v4, uh, you know, get up 
get those four kills, find the Mordekaiser after he comes out, and march down mid lane and, and, and take the game. And uh, I think the last fight showed a lot of uh, strength, especially from yeah. uh, some of the misplays they had in that <laughs> mid game. And uh, yeah, really good win from the uh, Jumbos to tie it up. Yeah, a lot of improvement from last game. That last fight, it kind of looked like Sheridan panicked. They didn't want to take a fight around the Baron, and then they realized, as you said, that the Tufts could try and get that inhibitor. And so they started running back, but then a couple miscommunications occurred. Some members got back before others. South got caught with that solar flare, tried to buy some time with the Zanyas, but it just wasn't enough. Hecram got taken out by Morn, uh, despite being kind of more of a tank bruiser, still more just cut through him like a hot knife through butter. Yeah, and uh, again, like you're saying, they didn't really know where to go. That was in large part due to the pressure that Tuss was able to do, bef like add before. You know, that's the kind of power of having that inhib down or inhib up, but like the inhib tower taken down and the cloud soul, you know, getting threatened because they had three things they had to bounce around. Sheridan had to. They had to, you know, make sure Baron didn't get taken. They had to make sure they didn't get uh, their inhib taken down and run down mid lane. They had to make sure that Cloud Soul wasn't being taken. And with all that confusion, they were able to find a really nice flash engage from the Leona and uh, pick up that win. Yeah, too many irons in the fire. So with that, we'll see how both teams decide to play out game three. We'll see if Tufts can clutch a victory make it 2-1 and hopefully stay in this tournament or will Sheridan knock him right out of it. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a little bit.
And we are back with a little bit of pregame before game three. And Tufts really need this win. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely um definitely a really strong performance in the last one, you know, having uh all three lanes like starting off winning and there were, you know, a couple uh, hiccups again with, around that top laner, you know, just uh, abusing like the Mordekaiser R this time, but the Laoi R of the game before that. Insane. And uh, yeah, uh, a much better performance this time, a lot less of them getting picked out, a lot more of them getting the picking instead. And uh, yeah, definitely going to be an interesting one to this game three, uh, especially because, like we've said before, if they lose this one, they're out of playoff contention. They need to win out to, you know, keep their playoff dreams alive. And uh, don't let the that flame puts a lot die of pressure out. On game three, yeah. <laughs> Which last game they really turned it around from game one. They still had the same momentum early on, and then they finally were able to kind of carry that through the rest of the game. Yeah, Which... a lot. Of really good job, like you know. Not letting that jungler, you know, get the ball yeah. in back into the game, uh, making sure it's that the down. top laner was like matched a little bit, and uh, you know, making sure they also have that objective control, so they were able to threaten that cloud soul to, you know, uh, really spread Sheridan thin around that uh, bot lane or top jungle when they were split between the inhib, the baron, and the cloud soul, and uh, uh, it eventually just turned into a win for them. Yeah, and. I wouldn't be surprised if they just kind of do the same thing game three and put even more emphasis on trying to shut down Sheridan's top laner. Since the past few games, uh, he's really been kind of their rock uh, in the in the gusting winds, really. He's been popping off. And then, yeah, last game was just so impressive, despite being so far behind, really making the most of that. Uh, I choose you ultimate and almost bring his team back into the game. Yeah, and uh, looks like uh, they're getting ready to start the draft soon. Uh, this time, Tufts will be on the blue side, so we got that synergy you were talking about there earlier. There we go. Well, that, yeah, GG then. I don't know why we're even drafting. Because <laughs> for me, the game is won by lining up the colors or in the loading screen on who has the most, and if they're tied, who has the better skins. Because uh, <laughs> you have to look good to play good. So Yeah. We'll see, it, seems we'll like, it, uh, <laughs> it seems like they're already in the middle of their draft. Um, Leona and Kaisa uh, picked up again for uh, for Tufts with the Nautilus Aphelios answered by Sheridan. But this time, it looks like the Skarner is going to be picked up for Sheridan. Uh, you know, we saw him in the last one and a half games. One and a half because, you know, the mix up with yeah. the Skarner and the Kha'Zix. But, uh, Unless it's the Kha'Zix. Yeah. No, it's it might be a Kha'Zix again. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I'm assuming it's going to be Skarner, just like how Sheridan has been playing this out. You know, they've always been going for that, uh, you know, fast jungler to try to, you know, punish the ball in for being too far up. And uh, Skarner with that uh, ultimate is going to be very good. But one thing I got to point out, Elise locked in for the side of Tufts. So we're going to have yeah. more Elise this game, which uh, I think is going to be very good. And uh, Mordekaiser again picked up for Sheridan, which is going to be a little scary. But Scion is what... Uh, Archie and import is going to be on, so definitely very interesting all around. Yeah, I think the Morn, uh, I would say the Elise on the Morn, <laughs> on Morn is going to be crazy to watch. I've seen so many cocoons come out of nowhere over the wall, over the hedge, uh, some crazy tower dives. So early on, that'll for sure be a champion to focus on. And then somebody else to focus on will be this Pantheon, who is notoriously strong or notoriously known for being strong in the early game and then falling off super quickly towards the end of the mid game, uh, which I think he'll be up against Renekton, uh, I'm assuming, unless they do a switcheroo. But yeah, Pantheon early on with those cooldown reductions, if he connects on a Q, Empower W if he decides to use uh, is it press the attack, I think, since then that it's fully stacked off of one ability and then you can yeah. chain into it. It's crazy. I think recently people have been going Conqueror on Pantheon just because like your Q's are like essentially a three second cooldown, three to four second cooldown yeah. level one, which is ridiculous. You can stack that up really fast, but I would not be surprised to see the press the attack either. Yeah, because with that press the attack, 
if he does decide to opt for it, try he could try and get an early advantage in the lane, push Renekton out of there, and then use that ultimate to rotate to either the bottom lane or help his top laner get even further ahead, uh, assuming he does kind of the same thing that we saw the last two games, which is play amazing. <laughs> yeah. And um, if uh, because it's not the Yone and the Pantheon instead, he's going to have a little bit of a harder time, you know, bullying this Pantheon because Pantheon is just a really strong laner right now. But once Renekton hits level six, I do believe the favor yeah. it does like go a little bit in his favor because that Dominus bit. is just so broken, so much fury, so much health, you know. It's just, it's just not fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That empowered, yeah, his empowered abilities are honestly broken. The call to me healing, ridiculous. The double slice and dice, or I guess slice and dice, not just slice. <laughs> and then yeah. the triple hit on the stun as well. Just with those constantly being up, as you said, when his ultimate's gone, it makes it so yeah. difficult to play against. But Pantheon, with that shield, maybe could fend off the initial burst. Uh, and take an extended fight, which if he does opt for Conquer, would be favorable. Yeah. And uh, with uh, them starting to go into the second phase of bans and the actual champ select, uh, we'll definitely um, be in this game <laughs> shortly. Uh, a lot of so pick close. potentials inside of uh, both teams, actually. The Leona Scion can lead to some engages, but against Garner ulti, Pantheon ulti into W, Nautilus hook, just a ton of engage on both sides. I'm assuming it's going to be another bloodbath, and... Uh, it's going to be whoever can, you know, catch the other one out more. Yeah, I think what I'm going to be watching is just uh, observing lane on the Mordekaiser into Argentine import Scion. Since early on, unless you're going Lethality Scion and <laughs> maxing Q or something, Mordekaiser can just kind of beat you up, get his passive going, and then heal off you. So... I'll be curious to see how that lane will play out. I'm assuming the Mordekaiser can get an early minion lead unless Argentine Import hits a cheeky level one fully charged uh, decimating smash yeah. uh, to push him down to half. But beyond yeah. that, without jungle help, I think it will be a struggle. Yeah, but at the same time, there is an Elise on the side of uh, yeah. Tufts who can apply a lot of jungle help, especially that top side <laughs> against an immobile top laner, which is Mordekaiser. Like, he has the ability to, like, you know, get that hook, but if he gets that uh, stun on him, he might just get one shot between levels 1 through 6. And, uh, Elise Redaction is a really interesting duo. It's usually played in that top lane because True. of the, you know, massive kill potential they have early and that camp and dive potential that they have with the Elise. But, uh, it is in the mid lane, so, uh, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I think... Well, Morn is used to playing with an aggressive mid laner. Uh, at least from what I've seen on the Striking Vipers, he loves to dive with them, and especially if easy life is on Renekton. If he gets the empowered slice and dice, he can go in, lock down the yeah. enemy laner. Morn can follow up. He can back out, juggle aggro. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see on that, I think, as we're going to wait for the spectator delay to taper out and then we'll get into the game. So stay tuned.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Riff Game 3. It's all on the line for Tufts. They need to get this win to stay in this tournament. Week 9 of CSL, it's going to be a close one. What are your thoughts coming into this match? Yeah, it's very close. Obviously, uh, I'm very excited to see them more at least, but... Uh, oh, 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 oh. another five-stack dredge line. Yeah, I think that dreadliner is gonna miss, but uh, good, good uh, response from Jansu anyway. If that hook was gonna hit, he needed to flash out of it first. So, yeah, I mean the hitbox on that could be deceiving because I, I remember watching a YouTube video once. I think once it fully extends, it then widens. Um, yeah, as if like the anchor turned sideways or something, which is why you often see it bend around towers or something crazy. Yeah, for sure. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. And uh, this this red buff is warded, but at least uh, is going to start here, which uh, you know might mean that Pantheon tries to steal, but also might mean that um, Warren is going to look for that top lane gank early. And uh, oh, Pantheon is uh, uh oh no, not an empowered Q. He wouldn't. He's thinking about it. He's looking for it. Oh, he's not oh, going to. Hands okay. backing off. I feel I feel like he could have done it. Yeah, me too. I mean, he wasted a little bit of time in lane. Um, I guess he didn't really miss any CS, but... Oh, that would've been so sick. Yeah. Also, uh, Aaron, <laughs> really quick. I don't know if you noticed, but Sion and Renekton decided to switch it up. Renekton oh my god, wait. Renekton's gonna go Mordkaiser and Sion's in the mid lane. I was gonna say, my scoreboard isn't matching what I'm seeing in the game. And yeah, right now up in the top side, Easy Life trying to beat up Mordekaiser. He might be able to get a quick kill, but the level two comes through, giving him a little bit more health. And so it won't pan out in the end. But yeah, that lane swap, I think is pretty advantageous for the side of Tufts. So that'll help him out uh, early on. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be a little hard to bully out this um, Scion as Pantheon. And uh, they can do the famous Elise Renekton uh, gang. Yeah, look, they're Elise looking for it. They want lane. it. He's got the level two. Morn's hanging around, coming around the corner. The cocoon connects. Flash for done up and first blood going to Morn. Well played. Yeah, nice job from uh, Renekton flashing in to get that W to make sure he had nowhere to go. And uh, yeah, quick first blood. And Elise is walking mid. Skarner's also in the bot side jungle, but uh, uh -oh. looks like Elise might try to go for a second gang. That Pantheon yeah. is really low. So the is Zion, are hurting, but. Uh, but... At least it's the first one here, and oh, Skarner's there, though. Lauren gets the kill, and now the Skarner in a 1v2. He does have both. He does have double buff, but so does Morn. The knockup from that Decimating Smash. He misses the flash, and Teen Import gets a kill as well. 1-0-1, oh, and, and another 3-0 oh start for Tufts. Yeah, and uh, Morn already showing why that Elise is banned in every other game in CSL. It's just yeah. so much work. The base damage from that champion is insane with the execute on the Q and the extra empowered autos that she gets naturally from being in spider farm. And while Skarner was able to sit in the bush, you know, uh, the Q uh, auto attack empowered with the W from Elise was able to, you know, get that Pantheon before Skarner is able to do anything. And they yeah. were able to kill Skarner afterwards. And more like right over this, uh, fire over this cuddle, but there's TP in from Scion. Yeah, they're looking for something else. The Cocoon won't connect, jump in from that Pantheon, locking down more. Smash will only Skarner, Pantheon trying to take out Morn, but the damage coming through might be too much. Here comes the Renekton as well. The shutdown comes through. Morn has fallen as well as a 150 gold bounty now. Renekton, easy life all alone, gets this nice cold of meat, gets one, looking for two. Can I get two? Constantine Valder gets the Skarner. One more Decimate Smash trying to get this. Mordekaiser won't come through, but that's a double kill for easy life. And now a 6-1 game at four minutes. Yeah, I mean, the first three games were, all, first two games were already very aggressive with lots of kills to both sides. So why wouldn't there be seven kills in the first why five not? minutes yeah. of game three? At least it, it's consistent. I like that. They're ramping up game three. Everything's on the line and both yeah. sides are just going ham right now. 
Yeah, and this Elise is so strong. She didn't have the back before then, but now she has the Hexec Alternator, Dark Seal, and Boots, and uh, the extra Hexec Alternator is going to add even more burst damage onto those ganks. And uh, Elise is looking down on the bot side. The ward just expired, and uh, looks like the uh, bot lane is going to respect the fact they don't know where the jungle is and back off. Yeah, and I think if Moran can keep making some plays right now, that'd be ideal, especially since Pantheon is still level four. Uh, once he hits level six, Morn does have to play a little bit more uh, careful as Pantheon can obviously show up with that ultimate, flying into a lane, doing some magic damage, as well as locking down somebody with a stun right after. Yeah, and uh, one other thing to note is like, uh, in the past, we've had like the Yoni or the Silas, you can actually like apply a decent amount of utility in the late game. And uh, while Pantheon can do that, he's also one of those lane bullies that if he's not ahead, he's going to be pretty weak into this mid to late game. And he's already 0 2 into the Scion, so. Yeah. So, yeah, Pantheon, if he can't get that early lead, like you just said, it's going to be a problem, especially when they're going to rely on him to roam. But right now, Morin coming into the top lane looking for another slice of this pie. Dominus from the Renekton. And the damage is just too much for Mordekaiser to take. They're shutting him down. They've learned their lessons from game one and game two. And they're giving him zero breathing room game three. Yeah, and you know, really good job from uh, Tusk, you know, coming coming up before he's level six. And while Mordekaiser was getting the really favorable trade, the, he was so far pushed up and Mordekaiser was easily able to get a kill. One thing about this React and Elise is that it means they're playing strong side top and uh, easy pick up Dragon for the side of Sheridan, but uh, BK gold lead at seven minutes is nothing to be trifled with. It's uh, no. <laughs> definitely a lot. Yeah, and then in the middle lane, it looks like the sign will be going Gorge Ranker, and he's not doing too shabby himself. 1-0-4. A massive CS lead on the Pantheon as well. So he looks will be deceiving. He's gonna be doing out dishing out some damage with those decimating smashes and even those autos really, uh, if another fight breaks out. Yeah, especially if he goes for that Titanic Hydra, which is, gives a ton of extra AD based on how much health you have. He can definitely be a force to be reckoned with. All right, and it looks like Pantheon is level six now. So we could see that Grand Skyfall coming in and up life 1v1 in the death round. Will he be able to outplay Mordecai's if the Decimating Smash connects? I mean, excuse me, the Obliterate connects. And Observing Lane finally finds uh, a foothold, picking up a kill, picking up a good chunk of gold, and we'll try and collect up some plates on the bottom lane. Now gets the dredge line on to Leona, but the sign is here into the back line, buying a whole lot of time for his team. Yansu takes out Strong Cat, and now they're just chasing on the Skarner. Skarner flashes over the wall, more and flashes as well, along with Yansu looking for a triple kill right here. Can they get him? And they do! And now Aphelios all alone, the double stun coming in from Tufts. Aphelios locked down a quadra kill. Holy cow, all for the price of one Leona. What a trade. Yeah. And Easy Life was playing a little aggressive, you know. Uh, didn't have ultimate, and Mordekaiser did, and was getting was got picked up because of that, but really good drive from the side of Tufts. We talked yeah. about the level 6 impact of the Pantheon, but we forgot to mention, Scion also has a... Uh, uh, yeah, very uh, similar. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they were obviously able to uh, collapse on that bot lane play that Sharon was trying to go for, and uh, get four kills over to that Kai'Sa, who is going to be a monster. Uh, Really good job from uh, Moore, you know, trying to uh, keep making those plays. At least kind of falls off, but uh, if you get those kills on that Kai'Sa, you know, that Kai'Sa's yeah. going to be really strong. Already has the Q upgrade, I believe. Yeah, I will trade Leona for four kills any day of the week. That's an amazing trade. And she's just going to keep getting stronger once she hits that level two power spike as well. Uh, I don't know what this Aphelios can really do to stay alive in this lane since one Zenith Blade I think would really seal his fate. And so I think it will come down to uh, the jungler and the Pantheon rotating, but Morn and Scion uh, as well can do the exact same thing. Yeah, and uh, I kind of like to see the Reckoning go aggressive here as he is right now because uh, he has the ultimate up, so he can try to take a little more aggressive plays before that, co that cooldown comes back up for the Mordekaiser. But, uh, yeah. I feel like playing overly aggressive into uh, observing lane in the top lane uh, 
could be potentially dangerous since he has been known to come back from tough situations. And right now, Easy Life staying alive in the death round, waiting to come back out, waiting for re-entry. I don't know if he's going to be able to make it. Zerling gets the solo kill. Scarm picking up a nice assist. And now it's a 1v1 jungler versus jungler. But here comes the Pantheon. That Grand Skyfall coming through. They're looking to stun up more. And Signs up in front, right in their face, looking for that Decimate Smash. But he gets stunned up before he can get off. And Morn goes down. And now Sign finds himself in a 1v3 Argentine impact. Flashes over the wall. No further follow up from the side of Sheridan. So some nice pickups though, slowly bringing them back into this game, but there's still a sizable gold lead. Yeah, and that's a little bit of uh, what you're talking about. Uh, Mordekaiser can come back into the game, three and three already on his scoreline, and uh, the Scar was able to come back. I like the idea of trying to go for the more of that Renekton at least, but you know, it's not as clean as they did before. They didn't know where the jungler was, and the Mordekaiser ultimately makes things a lot harder. And uh, it looks like Sheridan was just able to, you know, add members as they, um, you know, uh, as Tufts was losing them. So they were able to turn the 3v3 into a 3v2. And um, with that CC from Pantheon and Skarner, they're easily able to pick up uh, Morn and Easy Life. Yeah, and I think overall, this has really been the concern the whole series is that early on, Tufts super strong, but then as the game progresses slowly into the mid game, uh, they start to make a couple mistakes. They slowly slip up and allow Sheridan to get back into a potentially winning position. And game one, we saw it. Game two, it was close, but there was just such a huge lead that there wasn't a whole lot they could do. Uh, but for now, it's still early on, only a 4K gold lead, which is, the majority of it is on the Kai'Sa, which would be easy enough to pick off, especially if they can get the lockdown chain from the Nihilus and Pantheon. Yeah, and uh, now that they have that uh, advantage in the ball lane, it's really easy for them to, you know, turn on to this dragon. Uh, Morn is now on the uh, bot side with the dragon up, and easy pickup with only one plate left on that mid lane tower. Free real estate. Oh, uh, the middle lane Pantheon might be in a little bit of trouble. Argentine impact, soaking up many, many tower shots, and here comes the Starner sprinting after Morn. The slow barely misses. That could have been a pick right there. The Which is one of the things that they need to look for. Skarner, so uh, yeah. he had the ability to try to get in there, but Morn was easily able to get out, as he said. Scion, did he just all? Did he get some damage off on the tower as well? That one? Oh, I think he hit the Pantheon who tanked him. With oh, okay. Team. Well played by the Pantheon then. I, I think Unstoppable Charge does damage towers. Correct me if I'm wrong. It, it does, yeah. Okay, okay. I've seen some funny plays where a Scion will all right in between two neck. Yeah, and much of Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't remember if those were glitches or if those were factual. <laughs> yeah. And uh, with the Gore Drinker already picked up for the Scion, the Scion is definitely very strong, has a level lead, almost 30 CS up. Uh, almost got that tower as well, but uh, Nautilus is, you know, sitting around. Uh, looks like uh, the Tire Tough side is going, Tire Tough's team is going towards that uh, mid top side. Uh, yeah. You know, ready to answer the Skarner trying to come up. They're starting to kind of posture for a fight. Morn looking to hit a cocoon. A nice sidestep from the Mordekaiser to almost get some back in return with that grasp, but won't be able to find it. And with that, a little bit of a lull so far. No side uh, getting any picks right now. Dragon up in three minutes. So both sides currently just trying to get some plates and try and get some picks, maybe some vision as well. Yeah, and uh, Sion was able to get that first tower gold, so uh, mid lane's definitely going to be um, uh, a lot more open, and it'll allow for, you know, Tufts to try to, like, get more vision higher up into the jungle, which will, uh, might help getting those objectives, but uh, it's yeah. by himself. Uh-oh. Yeah, Jiansu just running straight into Aphelios' face, and he has to flash away from that solar flare. The easy life up in the top lane could be finding himself in a 1v2. The tower goes down, trying to slice and dice away, but he's in the death realm. Skarner will be waiting for him, but a teleport's coming through. Sign will arrive. Will he be able to save his teammate's life? The decimating smash connects. The knockup and stun is huge. Skarner flashing for though, slowing down easy life, pulls him back towards his Mordekaiser, but it won't be enough. And the slice and dice and a double kill goes over to Argentine import. 3-0-6. He is just a madman this game. Yeah, uh, really good. Also, really good job from uh, 
Jansu not taking that ultimate onto the Philios. I believe he had the cooldown up and four stacks on him, but it might have been a little bit of a bait as uh, while he's up 1k gold, he has paid the uh, Mordekaiser and Skarner tax that is QSS. Which yeah. means he's, uh, you know, has to pay, waste an extra 1300 gold on stats that doesn't really help him in that 1v1. So easy, uh, just backing off, you know, forcing the videos to, you know, reset or just like standard tower for a bit and uh, also able to make a play on the top side and again, massive Scion. Yeah, Scion is huge. And then quick jumping back to that Kaisa. I'm glad you said that was QSS because it kind of looks like a cosmic drive. My hope <laughs> for AP Kaisa. But unfortunately, we'll just be standard, boring, yeah. hyper carry cut stuff. <laughs> was yeah, four oh with kind of ulti in that last fight, so yeah. Tufts is looking at the top side. They got a three man dive set up. There's not much he can do. He tries to flashback around the rosy, juggling the aggro beautifully. Argentine import soaking up those tower shots, and then clean kill going over along with the tower. Now yeah, the bottom they're lane. Start looking for uh -oh. now. Yeah, easy life in a spot of trouble. Slice and dice back to the tower. Pantheon trying to follow up. Point blank Q thrown right through him. <laughs> That's a nice kill as well. And now Kaisa picked off in the middle lane. The Aphelios ult will go wide, but he does have the Graviton Cannon slowing him down. And Gansu staying alive, keeping the bounty, keeping the dream up. Yeah, that was really close. I thought it actually might be a return kill, then all this went yeah. down really low. That tower shot did a ton of damage, but uh, the turret was able to block the W, so Kaisa wasn't able to get the snipe, and uh, in the end, uh, she was going to back off spending her flash and ulti. Yeah, but without that flash and ulti, she only has... Well, I, 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 I take that back. She has Gale Force and heal. Never mind. I, I keep forgetting Gale Force is in the game. It just seems way too strong right now, providing so much mobility. And kind of once again, I guess Aphelios opting for that Kraken Slayer instead of the Gale Force, looking to just stand there and mow through him instead of trying to uh, dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Like Morn should have done. He gets picked off by the Skarner Mordekaiser combo, and Aphelios gets the kill. There's the Kraken Slayer, I guess. And there, there go to the Dragon. Uh, really good job getting that vision down to the side of Sheridan, you know, knowing they're going to have to face check it, and uh, Morn got, you know, hit by the hook into the Skarner ulti and uh, easy dragon pick up for them. But if you look at Tufts, they're all rotating towards that Rift Herald. Uh, they're walking over vision, so Sharon's going to know they're doing it, but it uh, seems like they're just going to, you know, take a little bit of vision, maybe kill that ward or just reveal it and then back off as Mordekaiser still has ulti and is very strong with level 11. I think what would be a fun play is if they try and bait the Herald and then, oh, hold on. Uh, Argentine import getting caught out, taking a little bit of damage right there, but Leona going right back in, Solar Flare locking down this Mordekaiser. And right now Pantheon up front, taking a whole lot of damage with that shield. Leona slain by the Aphelios, but a return kill on the star. A nice pickup from more Easy Life in the Death Realm. And Mordekaiser gonna find himself in a 1v4 if he makes it out of there. He does, Easy Life goes down, and the healing, the Omni Vamp won't be enough. Jansu takes out the Mordekaiser Pantheon trying to return the favor. Morn with that Dark Harvest proc taking out the Pantheon. Argentine import dishing out some damage on the side as well. Aphelios in a 1v2. The Decimate Smash connects. And with that, an ace come through for Tufts. Yeah, uh, and uh, I don't know if you saw that, but the Pantheon actually missed the Q onto the Kai'Sa, which for sh which would have definitely have killed her with yeah. that execute on it. And uh, Kai'Sa was able to turn out one more kill, and then you know, Elise and Sion were able to clean that up. Really good job knowing the fact that uh, Aaron was, you know, Morn was coming back and uh, had the ability to help turn that fight. And with the Sion uh, soaking up so much front and not able to let the support Kai'Sa just like carriage into this uh, back line. Uh, you know, yeah. really good job, a uh, really good fight, and they're gonna get, make this uh, almost 7k gold lead, uh, almost like 6.5k gold lead with this Rift Herald, and uh, yeah. Yeah, they can look to try and push through one of those tier 2 towers, open up the map even more, and then just keep looking for picks if they drop the Herald in either the top or middle lane, which I think they will since we already have Easy Life in the bottom lane. He'll most likely get that tower. Uh, Mordekaiser doesn't have a teleport, and nobody's rotating over just yet. So that should be a free uh, objective for him right there. Free structure, along with a whole lot of CS. And the fun play I was going to mention, what I was hoping to see, is they bait Shelly, and then Argentine Import 
on that Scion ulting from across the map and just blowing everybody up uh, with a <laughs> max distance unstoppable charge. But that didn't happen, uh, which in the end it did not matter as they wiped the floor with them. Yeah, but uh, while we're on the subject of Archie's and import, he has a Titanic Hydra uh, finish, which gives, jeez, 66 AD on a tank item. So not only does he get 500 health and the, like, on hit damage on his abilities and auto attacks that do like damage scaling on his health, he also gets 66 yeah. AD. Man, that this item is just so good. And then I think it, every minion counts as two or four points of health with the the passive off of his W, uh, that Soul Furnace. It just makes him so tanky despite not really building um, full health. Yeah, items. he is so getting 1,090 health right now off of his yeah. passive and W. Insane, which it's keeping him alive in the death realm now. Taken out, he's just too tanky with that extra health. And now he only has to flash up the wall to stay alive. It's a little bit of a split fight. And they are able to make it out alive. Uh, Sheridan back off. Skarner way deep in the jungle looking for a flank. Uh, but we'll just choose to recall. As now we see a little bit of A ram. The decimating smash connects Nautilus. He has to flash away. Once again, another overall, quick trade of uh, blows, but... Overall, Tusk is able to, you know, uh, get a couple flashes, uh, you know, stave off that attempt from Sheridan and, you know, like, just be pushed up. But at the same time, they aren't really getting a ton of vision with this because they have to reset really quickly, so... Sheridan still has a lot of control over the map. Yeah, and... With that control, they it kind of buys them time, really, to get back into this game. They are down by about 6k gold now, so down from 7. <laughs> Making it back in. They could look to try and sneak a dragon in 30 seconds. We'll see if Tufts rotates over for it, uh, which it looks like they are. But yeah, with that vision, they that really enables Nautilus and Pantheon to look for a pick, look for a stun of some sort that the rest of the team can capitalize on before a fight breaks out. Yeah, especially because like this bot, this bot like uh, bot river is completely yeah. dark for Tufts, and uh, that dragon is coming up in nine seconds. And now Ophelios no longer has moonlight vision. It looks like as uh, Argentine import just stood right in front and blocked it for his entire team. And are they gonna try and take Baron Wall? I think they are. Harold gets dropped in the river as Tufts start up the cloud dragon. Well, the rest of Sheridan are starting up with the Baron, but I don't know if they have the damage to chunk through it in time. We'll see. Scion does have his unstoppable charge. Here it comes. He's forcing him off. Pan down with a nice block, though. They're still on the Baron. Baron's going down low. They finally back off. It's at half. And uh oh, Morn in the death realm. Mordecai's in the 1v1. But who's on the back line? Leona finds some time for the rest of the team. Pantheon also jumping in, trying to take out Morn. Kaisa uh, so still staying alive, dishing out some damage, but slain by the Aphelios. It's a split fight. This Morn putting in the work. Finds so much time for the rest of his team. Easy life. You know, 1v3, but the rest of the team finally following up. The Zenith Blade does not connect. And with that, it's a 1 for 2. A flash forward from the Scion, though. Connects onto the Pantheon, followed by a decimating smash. That'll be a kill. One more for Tufts. Make that two. A double kill going over to Morn. And that Baron was a poor choice. Yeah, I mean, I think they played it relatively well, but just the like gold lead, I think, just made it so hard for them to win that fight. They were able to ult the Elise out of the fight, but uh, <coughs> Mordecaster wasn't able to actually kill her. And then they got the Skarner ulti on the uh, Jensu, uh, the, they got the uh, flamethrower gun from Aphelios, so dishing out a ton of damage, but just the massive Scion and the massive Renekton and the Kai'Sa just, you know, dealing a lot of damage, despite being that low on health after the Skarner ulti, uh, they were just able to win that fight, and, uh, you know, in the end, they get pushed off of Baron and get to make this gold lead closer to 9,000. Yeah, it has <laughs> increased by a large margin, making the game even more difficult for them. But despite being so far behind, the fight looked to be kind of close at the start, uh, which was a little surprising, considering all the gold invested in the side of Tufts. So... If they can pick off Sign, maybe get that 600 gold bounty and collect on Morn's bounty as well, uh, put in more gold into this Mordekaiser and Aphelios, 
those fights could potentially turn, which is a scary thought uh, with this being game three and all and Tufts really needing this win. Yeah, but picking up the sign might be a little bit of a tall order. <laughs> yeah, true. 4,000 health on that champion. And, uh, yeah, well, how much health is off that W? I think it's like 1,200 right now. Oh my god, it's just free health that scales forever as long as you're getting mid champions. And now Pantheon looking to be on the wrong side of the map. A teleport coming through from the Mordekaiser matched by Argentine import. Pantheon should fall before he gets there. The Mordekaiser just has to run back to the river, takes the blast cone over the wall to safety. But it did buy a fair amount of time, allowing Sheridan to push it down the middle lane, getting a tower, and they might look for two here. Yeah, but, but look at Tufts. They're all positioning yeah. around the science. Uh oh, yeah, look at that tap. flank. It all is freaked out. Yeah, the Zenith Blade connects, followed up by the Solar Flare into the unstoppable shot. That Nautilus is going nowhere, left for dead once again. Just like the lore, that's tough to see. Yeah, and uh, Tufts is now turning onto this Baron. The jungler is up, and Mordekaiser is sitting around there with the ulti, but uh, with uh, 5v3, Pantheon's coming up, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Garner's still like uh, walking towards that Baron, and uh, yeah. it looks like they're still be able, they're gonna be around it. But Mordekaiser and Scarner getting yeah. ready for the ulti. They're trying to get over the, but Mordekaiser didn't get the blast cone over, and Scarner's just gone before the Baron gets low enough, and that'll be an easy Baron for the side of Tufts, as well as some free gold with Scarner throwing his body over the wall, <laughs> offering up to. And with that, yeah. they can recall, reset, and look to try and close out this game. Yeah, honestly, I'm not really sure what happened there. I don't know how the Mordekaiser didn't get over, but uh, that was really big as it meant that Skarner was by himself and they weren't able to, you know, take the jungler out of the fight. I wonder, did were they kind of split over the wall and then the decimating smash connected maybe? Stopping oh, the that might have been it. Since it looked like they both took it or Mordekaiser missed it, but I, I feel like the decimating smash must have been the thing that stopped him. Yeah. I think it might have been that, and if it is, I just, again, just talk about RGD Import is so strong this game. Has been playing very well. On the sky on, uh, <laughs> getting tons of picks. How many health? How much health is he at now? 4,300. Millions. Uh, 73 AD on that Titanic Hydra, like, literally giving more than like a full AD item. Yes, tanks make sense. <laughs> He's looking to just one v five right there. He wants to. But for now, I feel more like AD than the Pantheon, by the way. I feel like this game of footsie is a little bit of a waste. I kind of wish they pushed those minions in a little bit more uh, while they had the time. Since now the dragon's up, which will burst it down. But they had like about 25 seconds of they're just kind of playing footsie in the jungle, which kind of felt like a waste. Uh, but Easy Life is up on the top side hanging out, looking to pick off that Pantheon and push through that tier two. And now in the bottom lane, Sign getting pulled back by that Mordekaiser, but now the Nautilus is the one in trouble. Jiansu diving in, getting the kill. And there's not anything he can do. The turret goes down. Now Mordekaiser's in some trouble. The CC chain is too long. He can't get his ult off in time. He's taken out. And with that, they're pushing into this base to kill on the Pantheon in the top side as well from easy life, easy life, easy game. They're pushing into this space. They're going to take another inhibitor. GG's coming out in chat. They are at about 30 seconds on those respawn timers. 10 seconds up until Nautilus, but I don't think Nautilus is going to be enough to win this game. Aphelios flashing away from that cocoon. They're onto the Nexus Tower. Giancho jumping after him, flying in, trying to get one more kill, but Aphelios almost turned around. He won't be able to. The Nexus Towers are down, and so will the Nexus. And with that, Tufts take game three, and the dream is still alive. Yeah, Tufts really strong performance there from start to finish. Uh, there were a couple of times where they got caught out, but just the pressure with that Elise and Renekton and making plays around that Scion. That Scion, by the way, had the most AD in the entire Huge. game. So uh, It's not fair. Yeah, that was really strong performance all around, you know, uh, getting a lot of nice picks around the map, you know. Uh, making this uh, Elise pick actually get a ton of pressure and uh, just really, really tough for uh, the uh, for them to you know come back into that game yeah. and uh, really nice way to keep the playoff dream alive. Yeah, the flame has not died out just yet. And I'm just glancing at the stats right now. Uh, Argentine import was four damage off from being tied with Morn. <laughs> 
both of them yeah. doing basically the exact same amount of damage, which was insane. And then, as you said, Scion, for being a tank, just puts in so much work. Those items synergize incredibly well with his passive. The more health he has, the more attack damage he has, and then he just gets health from minions. Like, it's just not fair. And, uh, yeah, uh, again, this was a victory for Tough, keep, keeping the uh, playoff stream alive, which means we are going to try to get an interview. I think we're going to get uh, Jensu in here, but before that, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, don't go anywhere. Uh, we'll be right back.
right, guys. Welcome back. Uh, I am here with uh, Jan Su after that uh, best of three win from Tufts. Uh, you know, congratulations on that win. I just have a couple questions I wanted to ask you. Uh, first off, coming off of that first game loss, what were you guys like talking about? How did you like come into that reverse sweep? I think we were talking about some key mistakes that we made during that first game. Uh, you know, it was absolutely a game that we should have won. We kind of figured out that, you know, we weren't really respecting their pick potential, which, like, you know, we got picked before objectives and they just got objectives for free. And moving into the second game, we really didn't want that to happen. It only happened, like, once, um, uh, where they got, like, a free cloud drake off of us being caught in the enemy topside jungle. Um, but we just really wanted to refine it so that we wouldn't be able to, you know, completely lose the game off of getting picked. Because as a team, I feel like we're really, really strong individually. We managed to get some really strong leads early game. Joseph is an absolute giga smurfer in lane. Like, we solo killed the bot lane, like, in every single game. And, like, you know, like, there's a really good, like, mid-top jungle synergy going on and everything. We get, that, we get those leads, and then we just find some way to int it. And, like, you know, we're trying to iron that out. And I think our, our loss against Maris um, really provided the, what you call it, motivation uh, for us to just, like, you know, clean up our play and everything. And we're we're slowly working through it. We're obviously getting, like, better and better as we go, but there are still some problems um, with, with getting picked and stuff. And so, yeah, so main thing, coming out of game one, we were like, guys, you know, overall, individual play throws the start of the game was good, but we need to make sure we don't get picked and give free objectives. And there's a lot of talk about setting up around objectives as well, um, there are a lot of times where, like, we're fighting on, you know, a lot of unspent gold or, you know, we don't have vision of the enemy jungle and therefore that opens up a lot of opportunities for the enemy team to come back. And so we're we're looking for more uh, ways to set up that kind of vision control and everything and get our gold spent before we start fights and stuff. We're over, we're very, very scrappy, so we have to iron those things out, I guess. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you guys did a lot, a lot better job of getting that objective control games two and three, which was uh, really nice. Uh, second question was, uh, you know, you've uh, been playing a ton of the Aphelios Kaisa matchup recently, obviously because those are like two of the strongest ADCs right now in like you know yeah. five <laughs> five competitive play. Uh, what do you really, what do you think of that matchup? I think that it's quite situational so like um in a in lane if aphelios plays well kaisa just kind of gets traded out because like there's no real way unless you get engaged on this support for kaisa to hit back aphelios because simply when you start the game you have calibrum and you just auto attack them like kaisa walks up to the wave starts hitting the minions you go boop she walks up again tries to trade with you you go boop and then as she's walking away after trading with you you shoot her another time and then like you know she's lost the trade mathematically there's no way she can win it so the only way she can like you know really turn around the matchup is if she has like an engaged support like Leona, Nautilus, and stuff like that. But generally, um, as you move into the mid game, like if Kaisa hits W on Aphelios at any point and like the support is like not near, you just get one shot. And like that is something I witnessed firsthand, like during that that Marist game. Like I got one shot by Kaisa, and literally I was under my turret, and then she just came out, sprinted at me, gale forced, and did all of her button things and just killed me. And so, like, she has really, really good dive potential, and I think that's what makes her really, really good against the Felios in, like, team fights if um, your team isn't really uh, playing to peel you properly. But if a Felios is able to get that peel, and I think you saw that in our game against Marist, where um, I believe we played, like, Galio, we had Camille, and then, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, we were playing against the Ivern Kaisa, like, diving backline and everything. Um, if you can get the peel off, a Felios is generally. A much stronger team fighter because he has bonkers damage with his crescendum turrets, his crescendum in general, Severum, Infernal, and everything like that. So it just really hinges on whether your team can peel Kaisa off of the backline and off of Aphelios. If you can't, she just absolutely annihilates him every single matchup. But um, if you can, then it's more Aphelios' favor. Yeah, and I understand that you've played a ton of Aphelios. Uh, you used to like be kind of a one trick on that, and uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, and one one thing I really want to talk about is the rune choice that you usually go with Aphelios. I noticed you've mostly gone phase rush for something that uh, Aphelios didn't really opt for, which meant that, you know, didn't have as much mobility. So you want to talk a little about that rune choice? Absolutely. I was hoping you would ask this question. I am a staunch believer in the cult of phase rush Aphelios, and here is why. Okay, So Aphelios, right, doesn't really need more damage he needs to get away from people that are trying to murder him, right? 
So like having phase rush allows you, you know, there's many ways you can proc phase rush. So you can auto queue auto with any of your guns, or you can just sever them queue and that activates your phase rush as well. And like lets you get away from people that are trying to get onto you. In particular, the champion that I feel that it counters the most is probably Olaf. Because Olaf has those axes which slow you. Phase rush gives you 75% slow resistance and also gives you like a crap ton of move speed. I can't even tell you how many times I've survived when like there's a team fight that's starting or whatever, and then somebody's immediately trying to dive me and I use phase rush to just get away from them and let my team, you know, peel me. I feel like it's a better rune for solo queue as well. Because like in solo queue, obviously your team is less coordinated and less willing to peel you. And so you have to do more of it yourself. And if you opt for full damage, you kind of just explode. I don't think Aphelios is really a good solo queue champion in general, but it makes it at least bearable in some respects. So yeah, um, one thing I do advocate for is that uh, if there is like a game where nobody will be able to get on you because your peel is like really strong or whatever, and you're playing against a mainly tanky matchup, there is no reason to go face rush because you need that extra um, damage and sustain from Conqueror. But I've yet to have a game that I look at it and I say, hmm, actually, I don't really prefer phase rush here because it allows you so much um, early game sort of uh, self peel. Like if the Olaf jungle comes out, you press Q on Severum and you're out of there already. So yeah, I, that's that's why I prefer the room. Yeah. Uh, you know, last like main question. Uh, after this match, uh, obviously that last game, you know, he had a really dominating performance all around. But uh, overall, what are you guys going to like take away from this and work on for those last two matches to try to secure that playoff run? So I think we're going to be looking at some more scrims against some difficult teams so that we can really um, work out <clears throat> how we can avoid like getting picked and you know working on our general macro and stuff. Um, one thing that had popped up during um, at the post-game reviews is that we're actually kind of bad at 1-3-1 because what happens is that you know we do 1-3-1 and then someone gets picked and then we get nothing and then you know we've basically just lost tempo and the enemy team can come back. So we're going to be looking into practicing that strategy more. And also we're going to be looking into probably uh, alternative picks in the bot lane. Uh, stay tuned. We have some dark technology uh, on the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we've been experimenting with some of that. Um, but uh, yeah, I and mean, that's pretty much it. I, I think um, individually our skill is pretty good, but we just need to work out some of the more like finer aspects of team play and macro and setting up objectives and stuff. And, uh, you know, I've generally, as a member of the team, um, have been seeing improvements in these areas, like playing three games ago with them versus playing now, it's like the comms are different. There's like a completely different sort of like atmosphere, I guess. And we've learned how to be less mental boom when we lose a game as seen by our strong comeback um, in this series. Like, you know, we were really worried about that because like we lose, normally what happens is that we win first game, we lose second game, and then, like, the third game's kind of a toss-up between whether we can keep our mental boomed or unboomed or whatever. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like we managed to really come back from it and pull the river sweep out. Yeah. yeah. And last of all, uh, like we always do, or almost always do, as I forgot to do uh, last interview, but <laughs> any shout-outs? Yes, shout-out to the A-team, my boys. Um, Joseph, Aaron, Theo, William, Alan, Brent. Alan and Brent have been high-key smurfing these, like, Drafts. There was uh, the, the last draft against um, or, or against Marist was was super duper like freaking big brain and like you know I couldn't have thought of something like that. But Brendan and Allen managed to pull it out. Um, shout out to the B team. Shout out to the C team. I don't know if they play. Shout out to my mom and my family and like my dad and my sister and my little brother. And uh, shout out to you guys for making such an awesome cast. Like, I, it, it just brings a smile to my face. Like, basically what happens is that after the game finishes, you guys are on delay, right? So I turn on the stream, and then I'm, like, watching how you guys, like, react to whatever's going on. And it's uh, it's really cool. And, like, I got to say the production quality is pretty damn good. Like, your graphics and stuff, you got that down pat. And, uh, yeah, and I really appreciate the work that you guys put into casting our games because honestly like it's freaking 10 57 p.m like if someone said dude you want to cast a game right now i'd be like uh probably not but um you guys came through and did it for us so i'm gonna pat you guys on the back for that thank you very much all right well jan thank you so much for coming in for this interview great job uh on this uh victory uh, good luck trying to you know finish this uh miracle playoff run and uh yeah we're gonna take a quick break uh when we get back we'll have some uh closing thoughts with me and aaron but um yeah stay tuned and uh, we'll be right back all right thank you guys 
Yeah, I keep. was difficult to watch, but they clutched up with that sweep in the end, coming out 2-1, and that slight adjustment to the gameplay really did wonders. Yeah, and uh, we got to hear uh, Jan talk a little bit about it, but yeah, it's really fun match to watch. Uh, so I got this, like, play Miracle playoff run has been so fun to watch. We've had three uh, best of threes, all, ga all went to game three in a row. It's been really fun watching them. It's exciting. You know? Yeah, really exciting. And uh, if you want some more exciting gameplay on Saturday, we are going to be playing against Colombia. Try to keep that playoff dream alive. It'll be our second to last match. And um, yeah, do you have any other closing thoughts? Uh, just that there's also a game Sunday, 3 p.m. against BU. But beyond that, it was a great series. So happy to see Tufts stay in this tournament. The dream's still alive. Uh, but yeah, that's it for me. Yeah, that, that's it for me too. Uh, on behalf of JumboCast, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. You know, congratulations again to Tufts for keeping that dream alive. Uh, make sure to tune in again on Saturday. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys later.